by the seat of my pants this is the busiest time of year for my full-time gig which is uh the dog care business we're wild in my family tonight we've got uh four different houses we're covering so very busy uh a lot more i would be like doing with the show tonight but uh i'm happy because we got a great guest so he's here and i'm really excited uh we've got a guy named uh known He's known. He's he's got like a lot of fans right now. He's a retired DEA agent. Like so, how I'm prepared I am. I don't even have all his bona fides in front of me. But this guy has been he's been around. He, uh, U.S. Capitol Police. He's worked in forensics um, for a, a, another department, I believe, in Virginia. But uh, really, 28 years, I think it was, with the Drug Enforcement. I almost said agency. That's what I always have called it. It's wrong. It's Drug Enforcement Administration, the DEA. That's the name of the organization he was at for a number of decades. And for us, for my show, it's kind of exciting. Got to admit to have someone that used to work at the DEA because I've been involved in this activism stuff mostly forever for cannabis. So when we started, it was totally illegal. There was no decrim. There was no medical. There was no legal, no hope. And then I saw within our lifetime, the poll numbers changed and we knew things we were going to put on the ballot and uh, things did change everywhere. So it's very exciting for me to have legal cannabis and to have a D a former 28 year DEA agent on. We may talk about that, but tonight I really want to go back to what everyone's interested. Free Karen Reed, justice for John O'Keefe. He is one of the earliest folks to come out on this. And had a, a, like a social viral post that he put out with questions for the chief of Canton Police, Rafferty, that so far has gone unanswered. He listed his name, he listed his, his bona fides in law enforcement, and so far those questions have gone answer, unanswered. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what happened this week in Canton with Turtle Boy and a bunch of other stuff. We may even talk about uh, some of the other shows, too, uh, that I've I've even become a viewer and listener of like uh, the yellow cottage tales. There's some stuff going on. He's at the center of a lot of the stuff and there's a lot of news this week. So with no further ado, Sean on the golf. What's up my man. Hey Mike, how you doing? Good. How you doing? Good. I'm happy to be here. And thank you for having me. I'm excited to have you. I, I don't even know where to begin tonight. Is there anything that I screwed up in, in the introduction about you? Not at all. I had it right on the money. I did I did two and a half years at U.S. Capitol in D.C., transferred over to Arlington County, Virginia PD. I worked there for five years. The last three years, I was a CSI guy. When I worked crime scene investigations, and I hired on with DEA and worked there for 28 years. It was a hell of a ride. And here I am. Who would know? And you've also done, like, you, you know, you were an agent with the DEA. At the end, you were a supervisory agent. You did like money laundering, international money laundering, weren't you? You were like the head of that. I supervised, yeah, DEA's Bogota office for money laundering, which was the Mecca. We brought all the money back into the country that was being funneled out from uh, Colombia to the States to Europe. It was a fascinating, fascinating end of my career. It was beautiful. You know, I bet that was kind of a good assignment at the end. It was uh it was in, it was interesting to say the least. It was a it was a whole different spectrum because for about 25 of those years, I was on the other side, buying dope, working dope cases. I never worked money before. And it was a fascinating learning experience. It was, uh, it was, it was awesome. And I was so, very fortunate. Yes, you're very fortunate. And um, so now you've recently come out, you've been one of the most vocal supporters, I think by far from what I see of free Karen Reed. You think Karen Reed is innocent. You came out early. Why did you decide to support Karen Reed here? Well, I, I think like most of most everyone, um, let's face it, I retired back to, to Naples. I started chasing white balls around the golf courses and um, life was going on nicely. And it was about probably April of this year, a good friend of mine from Canton, we're all playing golf and he said, Sean, do you remember this case in Canton with the police officer got found dead? I said, yeah, I heard about that in I don't know, February, January of last year. I just thought it was a very unfortunate tragedy. And then life just went on. He says, no, Sean, you, there's something going on. 
I said, okay, now we're in the middle of a round and I'm, I'm a little, just a little bit intense with my golf game. He says, Sean, you got to listen to this guy, Turtle Boy. I go, what? He says, you got to listen to this guy, Turtle Boy. I said, what are you talking about, Turtle Boy? And I'm thinking about my game. And he says, Sean, just do me a favor, go to this website and listen. And I did. And at first, I just said, you know, I was skeptical because I said, this is, this is crazy. This is, this is, it was, I, I will say one thing. It was the way he, did, it was the way he told the story. It was the way he captured me. I'm looking at him. I'm saying he was surprised. He was not a believer at first also. So I said, let me listen to this. So I started listening to his podcast. I started reading his blogs. I started reading other reports made by the camp police. And I said, wait a minute. Now, 28 years of my life was dedicated to the narcotics business, but I, my foundation is in police work. And I was fortunate to have the three years prior to DEA as a crime scene investigator. I did the crime scene jobs. I put the yellow tape up. I cordoned off all the areas that had to be investigated, that had to be searched. And it was a a very systematic, regimented protocol that it's, it's an industry standard that you have to follow. And I just started looking at this case. I said, someone's not right here. And then as time went on, I started getting into these groups, sitting in the background, watching people discuss the case. I would post anonymously some thoughts. And then it was probably, I don't know, May, maybe the middle of May, I think the chief of can came out with a, a statement. And she was has, asking people to have patience. Uh, she said that, uh, I think it was a director at Aiden, but she said it was some sensationalism going on. And I, I just didn't see it that way because there was something there. So I, I waited, she said to have patience, to let the process go and she would have answers. And then it was probably about the middle of June and, and the case was building, the information was coming up. That one hearing where Karen's defense team came up with that poster with the dog bites, I said, that's it. That, that, that changed everything for me. And I said, there's just no way how a vehicle, even if you took the state's own case, how a vehicle could just hit an, a, an individual from the neck up, cause all this damage to have bruise marks on the back of his hands, no pelvic damage, no knees, no, no fractures of ribs, and have this incredible injury. And they're lacerations to me. They're not abrasions. And in fact, one of the police officers in the report wrote down lacerations. But as we're seeing now, I mean, we're seeing this evolve because all the reports are being changed. And But that's what got me. So... Yeah. Based on that, no, I, I want to I want to stop you just for one second because, sure, the, um, you brought up something about the the, you know, the cuts, and you know also yeah. which I don't think gets brought up enough. I know Turtle Boy shown it and talked about it. It looks like he punched somebody like that. I've punched somebody. I've been in fights as younger. Yeah. Like right. that looks like he punched somebody on the hand. So that's another one. But like Court TV, one of these, you know. These guys that think they know what they're talking about. I don't think they know the case like Turtle Boy does. I don't even think they know the case no. like I do, or especially you or Turtle Boy. Um, but he he got up there and said, well, I think it's possible that those cuts came when the car went over him, that he almost got run over from the bottom side of the car. I mean, do you think there's any credence to that? I watched that show. Listen, Vinnie Paul Tannen's great. How he got four people, he had well, a female and three other guys, all agreed at once, I, just, I said, this couldn't be. I mean, they were, first of all, they were factually wrong. They didn't have the right, they didn't have the right facts. And I just said, well, this is drama for TV. I guess he has to throw a few things in. But generally speaking, uh, Vinnie Politan is usually on the mark. And I believe he has a, a, a definitive opinion on this case. And I think it leans towards Karen Reed. He, he, it's in his voice. I'm telling you, the first video I saw, was the uh, Karen backing up out of her drive into the car. He was a believer there. His female journalist was giving the story. He said, hey, wait a minute. That's not good. And, and I could hear it in his voice. But 
anyways, but getting back to your point, how I, I guess, threw myself into the ring here, I decided to sit down and say, okay, if I come out, I have to come out basically with my law enforcement background as a police officer, not a DEA guy. And so I wrote this letter. I drafted it maybe 10 times. I had to get it right. And I thought it was kind of a, a very, an executive level person should it be able to answer these questions. And so I had 17 bullets that I said, uh, Chief Rafferty, I'm coming as a friend. And I just would like to ask these 17 questions. If you can answer, fine. If you can't, I'll understand. And it's what it's now September. And it was, that was the middle of, uh, middle of June. But I signed my name. I gave my bona fides, like you said, and my world got upside down. And I said, I got thrown into this thing. And now it's like, here I am. And, uh, and yes, I do believe that Karen Reed is completely innocent. And you can't be, well, the type of person I am, I can't be straddling the line. You're either in or you're out. You're either on Team Karen or you're not. What I want is that the person that's out of the, out of the ring, I mean, fully out of the ring, Convince me where I'm wrong, or let me talk to you about how I feel. I haven't had that. I've asked, I've asked publicly uh, with Kevin Lenahan the last show I was on. I haven't got any feedback. So. Our uh, the viewers that love you, they're making a lot of comments tonight. Um, they're noting that you know a couple things I wanted to add too about your background is that you're a local guy. You're in Florida now but you uh, were originally a Boston guy and then you went to Canton high school for four years and you're a Canton high school graduate. I think class of 1975. Is that right? What year? That's correct. 75. That's correct. Wow. It, that's like seven, before Carl Fisk and shit, right? I mean, that, that's like, that's way back. No, yeah. When was yeah, Carl Fisk was, around? Uh, he was in the late, he was in the mid seventies. I remember yeah. uh, the, the famous yeah. the home run. Right. Yeah. I remember yeah. that. I, and, I, was young. And I was in, yeah, yeah, went through those painful years. Come to Naples and then went, what, four World Series? It's incredible. But so you, you're, yeah, a I was originally guy. a Boston guy, born in Dorchester. Half my time was in Dorchester, St. Peter's Parish, for all the dot rats. And uh, then we moved to Canton, I mean, moved to uh, Mattapan and spent time there with St. Angeles. We, we, in Boston, as you probably know, Mike, it's all about parishes. It's landmarks, parishes, right. streets come in later on. And then um, I was enrolled to go to Catholic Memorial. And then my parents moved to Canton. And I spent four years in Canton, went to Westville State, and went down to D.C. and started my career in 1979. A long time ago. But however, Mike, I got to tell you, I love, well, I wanted waking to up say every something. morning. I love that you oh, said yeah. parishes because it's uh, even in the sticks. Like I've lived, you know, different place. I, I'm a Massachusetts guy. I've, you know, went to school. People sure. know Bridgewater State, um, but mostly a North Shore guy. I've lived in Boston, Cambridge, Somerville, different places. But uh, my, like my little neck of the woods, where I kind of grew up, and you know, my second half of my early life, let's put it that way, was a place called Byfield, and it's part of Newbury. And Byfield was created oh. because of a friggin' church, a parish church. It's like if you go back to it, and there's so much of that, even. Even in the sticks, like it's like where you know my grandparents they ended up in Danvers. You know, it's so oh, funny. Right. If you Danvers, lived here, yeah. you went to that church. It's so it's yeah. so it, it it that that goes so far. It's so like even not just the city too, like even beyond the cities. It's it's very interesting. I but love it's it. just funny when you say being involved in this case as intensely. I I kind of tend to take everything pretty intense, and. Um, I wake up every morning saying, where the hell am I? Am I in Canton? Am I in Boston? Because my whole life is dealing with people in Canton, in Boston. And that phone, that computer is on 24-7. I get to go to sleep, wake up, start the day. It's like just start the whole day over again. But I love it. I think it's uh, it's been a great experience. And I think we're having a movement. Aiden's doing an incredible job. You got to listen. I told him yesterday, no matter what's going on, I support him a million percent. He, it's because of him that I'm here, and everyone, I believe everyone else. And Me too. You can never take that away from him. I'm telling you, it's amazing. And uh, there was some questions people wanted to know. Last night I noticed he said some good things about you too. People wanted to know the comments. They were like, because there's been some things going on with Facebook groups, and 
And then there was the show, The Yellow Cottage Tales. I mean, people are in our comments about that. I, I did mention them. Um, they say Yellow Cottage sucks. I, I you know, I think I want to be nice to them, honestly. Like, I, I feel what people are saying. There's another one, Yellow Cottage Tales sucks. Like, I, I don't think they suck. Like, I don't. But I, I, I get why people are kind of aggravated with Kevin. And I, I guess I'm kind of aggravated with Kevin, especially when he... You know, kind of said the shit he said about the mob and Turtle Boy and taking money, which I, it's bullshit. Like, I just want to say, like, I've been subjected to the same, from the same accusations from the same people, not on the level that Turtle Boy has, obviously. But as soon as we started having Turtle, we had Turtle Boy on, they were anonymous trolls saying that we're taking money from Karen Reed. And the person that went after Turtle Boy the most about taking money from Karen Reed is Wendy Murphy. And if I know anything about Wendy and her son, I've had a lot of experience with her son. People don't realize that maybe, but I have. And her son did the same exact thing to me. He claimed I took money from places I would never take money from. If people know about us, we're, I'm a cannabis, uh, huge cannabis reform guy, but I am also one of the biggest critics of the big cannabis companies when they do wrong. So there's no way that I would take money from companies to not disclose it. And that's exactly what this sure. guy was saying about me. And that's the son of Wendy Murphy. So for me, it's like the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. It's funny right. to see his mother do that to Aiden. And I don't believe it. Like I know, like I've worked with different um, attorneys in court cases on the show. And I just know how it works. And I don't believe that Aiden would have put out a hundred plus blogs done no the coverage that he did if he was being paid. Because if he was being paid, he would be being controlled by that law firm. He'd be, be controlled by the defense and they would be much, I think they would be much more safe, like by the book and safer. And I just, it doesn't ring true. I do not believe at all. If you no. look at the facts, there's no way I, I bet my life on it. Aiden is being paid by the defense team. And, and uh, so I, I take uh, offense to that from Kevin, but I also understand hosted shows. I think there's more to what we see. I think a lot oh. of times when you run a show, like I run a show and you have different people on, especially when you have a crew, uh, there's, there's personality clashes and, and people have different visions for the show and they have, you know, it, it can get dicey. And I think that's really kind of what I think is going on on that show. I think that they're having some issues on, they don't know which way they want to go and he's trying to take a stand. And But I just don't think he's doing it the right way. I don't think he's a bad guy. I don't think people should boycott them. I think they should stick with them a little bit and just try to, talk sense to him like you know i don't think he's a bad guy i don't think he's being paid by anyone um but no. what do you think sean i just went on a, like a five ten minute spiel okay. and y'all talk college shells yeah, i've that's... never met these guys but i like them i watch them all i i think the other uh, guys on the show dave is cool the woman i, I like yeah. them all i think they're all good people so yeah. you've been on the show cool. you've had experience what do you think about them sean and what's going on okay so in defense of kevin uh, let me let me backtrack a little bit I, I accidentally ran to his show back in the early days. He had wore these big glasses. I couldn't remember the actual YCT. I was just say the guy with the glasses, yellow tails. And I started watching him. I started watching his, some of his old shows. But when he started talking about the Karen Reed case, I said, wow, this is pretty good. And to be honest with you, I love the fact that he was not like on my side or the other side. He was in the middle of the road. I enjoyed that. Um, I respect Kevin. I, I do agree with him to a certain degree. I think he had a bad night. Um, listen, I was a guest. Uh, it, not on me to make any comments. I was in this chair when that whole thing happened. And I re-watched, but I, I didn't know we could actually watch these comments here, which is great. And whoever said about Ken Davis, Kenny Davis is a great guy. Just wanted to say that. But getting back to Kenny, uh, to Kevin. He saw comments, and I didn't know he could see comments. And all of a sudden, it just something got something got to him. And I just think, you know, it. it he apologized. We had talks uh, afterwards after the show. We stayed on 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 the this platform and talked for about a half hour. And he he was very open with me. We talked since then. I um uh, I think he's fine. I like Dave. I like Aaron. Aaron's great. Uh, Dave is uh Dave reminds me a little bit of younger me. He's got a lot of aggression. He's got a lot of uh ambition, which is great. I love it. And so I think it's uh 
I think it's a show that can, can go forward. I think it was a bad night. That what can I say? We all have them. It can happen, you know, right. especially if you haven't been doing this for like 10 years and, you know. Oh, geez. I mean, it happens to me, and I've been doing it for over 10 years. This show's been going for nine oh. years. We had a show before that for like another five or six. So it hasn't been in this format. It's been different, but, you know, I've seen it all. <laughs> well, let's face it. Turtle Boy is the OG. Yeah. I'm, new, I'm a newbie. No, not podcast. everyone can be a Turtle no. Boy. Like, no. Saw, I think my audience saw that I wasn't even on the Turtle Boy level a couple of shows ago. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. not easy, this stuff. Like I even think I wonder about Turtle Boy how he handles shit. And uh, so, and I promise I get this. I have to get this in because it did kind of. It, it was amazing because he's a central mask guy. And they're different, and Western mask guys are even more different, right? But he made me laugh so when we were talking uh, before the show. And we we're just kind of working things out, and he says, "Sean, Daddy had to come home. Daddy took over." And when he said that, it just brought me back to a buddy of mine in Western Mass. He would say, "Sean." Daddy's here, and I, I just, and when he said it on TV, because I thought people would think I was crazy, but he did it. I, it was just, it brought back some great memories from my, my college days of being in Western and Central Mass. It was just beautiful. He's, uh, <laughs> he I always laughed my ass off. Dad, the daddy <laughs> stuff, I know. Some of the, it was great. It was. Now people are asking, really is was. Turtle Boy coming on the show tonight? They always want to know if Turtle Boy is coming back. I hope so. Your guess is as good as mine. If he if Batman shows up tonight, I mean daddy, he, he's daddy, a big daddy. Daddy is invited to the to the show tonight if he wants to come in. Yeah, yeah. So no, it's all good. You know what? I'm I'm glad uh, we're getting a lot of comments about Yellow Cottage Tales. Uh, I think people, you know, some people aren't feeling it for them, but other people are kind of feeling what both of us are saying, which I think is good. So I think there's. Yeah. People are kind of able to maybe see through it a little bit. You can be, I'm aggravated by Kevin, but I don't think he's a bad guy. Like, I like him. He's I do. not. I, I, you and know. Listen, and Kevin's very open. I mean, he's dealing with some personal issues in his own, his own personal life and maybe his uh, immediate family. I got a 95 year old father. I mean, life happens. It does. So, um, yeah, we're getting a lot of comments. Turtle Boy is the OG. Priceless just came in from YouTube. Yeah, I mean, people people want Turtle Boy on the show tonight. And people also are, are, are talking about Wendy, too. Nobody has anything good about Wendy to say in the comments. Yeah, I yeah. noticed that. Gee, I wonder why, yeah. Wendy. I wonder why. Also getting a yeah, lot of I really, Oh, go ahead. I really liked her in the early days when she was doing comments on cases. I just don't know what happened. Uh, people change, I guess. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It, but it just shows you how polarizing this case is. It is polarizing. I mean, just as many people like me feel that feel the same for me that I do for Karen, there's another side that feel adamant that she's guilty. And there's many, not many people in the, in the, in the middle. And like Kevin, I, I think he likes to stay in the middle so he's completely convinced. I think in his own heart, he has a feeling, and it shows. I can read him. I like his position. I do. And uh, we, we're we getting a lot of comments for the award-winning journalist, the doctor, Turtle Boy. The doctor. Yeah, people people are going off on his different phrases. Chicken parm Charlie kills me every time. You know, so the, the, he's got so much. Uh, Listen, you know. he, he made a comment way back in the early days. And he said, I don't, I don't know. I think I know it. But he made a comment, and this kid, he comes out with these, he's, he's amazing. He says, this guy has more chins than Chinese uh, phone book. That just, I, I almost fell off my seat. He came out like it was just, it was there. It was ad lib, not thought of. This guy has more chins than a Chinese ch uh, phone book. And it, it, it cracked me up. I never heard it in my life. I guess it's an old joke, but I never heard it. He just has this way about him. He's, he's amazing. He really is. So uh, let's talk about some other stuff too, because a lot sure. has come out recently. Do you want to talk about like some of the, <clears throat> there's been a new defense filing. There's been like three prosecution filings. Do you want to talk about any, any of that stuff? You know, I, to you? I mean, they're kind of new. Um, <clears throat> I, I, it's great that Lucky Lawford has come forward. That's, that's a biggie. Um, I think the September 15th hearing is going to be explosive. Um, the judge has, 
you know, she has a she has a handful now because she, there's a record. And I believe that the defense has uh, appealed some of her decisions, rightly so. And um, I think September 15th is be awesome. You know, I'm, I don't get into many of the weeds of this. I, I want to keep it to how the officers who had no idea that this was coming down, they get the phone call, they get the radio call, and they show up at this, this resonance and how they dealt with what they encountered. And I like to stay with that because I think that's the crux of the case. That's ground zero. I've always said, you can't change that crime scene. That crime scene is, and they're talking about crime scenes that can't impede. Listen, I don't know where this came from. Um, it's what I believe it's noise. It's, it's like, stay away from, I said this a thousand times. Let's talk about what, what, why was Jen McCabe the first person that uh, detective, whatever his name is, Proctor interviews? I talked to a million cops about this. I said, let's pardon up. Who are we going to interview? The guy in the house. It's his property. There was a party. Whether he's in or out, it doesn't matter. Cops have to eliminate suspects. He's the first one. That's what guy you want to eliminate. Never done. They go down away from the house. They start talking about waterfall. I call it the kiss and drink tour. They're talking about kisses and drinks. I kind of coined that. And it's, it's crazy. It's the attempt was keep this so far away from Brian Albert and 34 resident, uh, 34 Fairview uh, Drive. And I got to tell you, I said the other night with Kevin, that put Brian in the trick bag because guess what? There's a big hole there. There's a big question mark. Had they gone in and found nothing? Everyone's in order. Maybe there's some paid potato chips. Maybe there's some spilled beers. Maybe there's who knows. But there's, there's no blood. There's no signs of a, a struggle. Well, we might be talking about something completely different now, but the fact that they didn't do it is the issue. And I, I'm seeing these other law enforcement people say, well, wait a minute. No, no, wait a minute. You have a guy with 13 degrees. He's got no coat on. They don't know he didn't have a coat on during the whole night. You come on. This is the problem. People, we're 19 months in this. We know this case back and forth, but those cops didn't. They come on the scene. They said, holy shit, what do we got? Well, their, their minds, their training has to kick in. You see a guy with no shoe on, no coat on. He's in outside a residence where a party took place because the girlfriend says, I dropped him off for a party in that house. That is ample probable cause. I don't care. I'll debate that with anyone to, to say at least. I know. It's imagine if that right. happened at my house. If that was my house, they would have been there. They would have been knocking at my door. They would have been searching. They would have looked at the one pot plant I have on the deck. Like they would have like, they would have scared the crap out of my dogs. Like they would have been in here. They, I know for right. a fact, because I, you know, if it was an underage drinking incident, they would have been in the house. Like that just right. Unbelievable that they didn't go yeah. in. To his that, house. That's, that's troubling. And I'll tell you, it's going to be an issue. If this, listen, I, I'm still, 50-50, will this ever go to trial? But if it does go to trial, and I'm a little selfish, I want I want to see this go to trial because I want to see how these guys are going to sit on that stand and explain their actions. They're going to put experts on afterwards, and they're going to put guys like me who've done the job. I watched, I watched on court TV. It was the widower uh, murder, whatever it was, I, I think it was, and this detective, the lead detective, he gets on the show. Actually, he gets on the stand in court live. He goes, runs through the protocol textbook. He says, we didn't enter that scene until everyone that was going to search the scene was on the property. And we had a briefing. We, we uh, gave our assignments. No one in, no one out until we had a person scribing, taking measurements, taking photos, taking sketches, measuring uh, looking for evidence that's standard protocol if i was doing it in 1981 the trade has evolved since 81 exactly but you don't deviate from protocol and there's a lot of mistakes in this case and like i said you could change all the reports you want but there's a four corners of that paper that can't change you can't bring back what happened that day because there's a record now defend that record that's it's it. It's going to be that's hard. The case. You're right. They could drive that's a truck my, through it. That's my part. Yeah. Right.
I'm glad you mentioned the other part too, because there's, I feel like there's multiple ways they're going to be drive a truck right through it. And that's like what you just laid out is number one. You also mentioned the other part, which the award-winning journalist really uncovered, which was the lucky law firm. Like, I don't see how they're going to be able to get away, get around the plow driver's testimony that he drove by twice, not once, but twice. And this is like, I, I got a plow group guy that comes through here i move my car for him right. like these guys sure. look like they are like by the like they know exactly like, they're like by the inch like they know what to look for those guys are looking to the sides because they don't want to break their 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 equipment and they don't want to damage well, anything particular- and get charged so like this these it- guys are looking side to side i don't care you know yeah. jen cough whatever her name is that crazy you know woman on twitter is claiming otherwise she's deleting tweets that we should talk about her today but what do you before we get to her what do you think about lucky and the whole thing about lucky ironic right so ironically where john was found by the flagpole there's a fire hydrant and during the winter maybe i mean i noticed when my own father's house they put these uh you know sticks in the ground so it illuminates at night time you see, you see a plow truck come, you see those halogen lights coming from a mile, you know it's coming. That place must have looked like a like daylight when it came down at two exactly. o'clock in the morning. You got snow, it's illuminating. There's no way he could not, if the body was there, he would have seen it, especially if he's cognizant of that hydrant. I always said this, there's no way that a body could be missed if a, fire, if a, plow, guy, a plow driver was coming through looking at that hydra because you would see a six foot person right up two feet from it by the flagpole it's well they picked the wrong spot to put the body if they did it that way that was the wrong spot right let's face it i mean there's so many holes i mean i like i said but then you have the other the other part of it you have the fbi involvement and that's where my expertise as a federal agent comes in because I know the ins and outs. I know the ins and outs of the grand jury. I know how it's worked. So I kind of have a a dual commentary role in this thing by virtue of my experience. That's it. I definitely want to talk about the FBI aspect of the grand jury before I get there. I want to talk about that Hi. Jen Coffin Daffer. Uh, we got some comments about her too. Uh, I, I can't you get her name straight her all Twitter? the time. Do you see her on Twitter? Do you know what she's I've, been posting? I've, I've engaged. I've, I've engaged her several times, and I know someone made a comment. I've never listen. I've, I've asked her questions. She won't answer me. I don't know why. She knows who I am. All right. Um, she has an impeccable, incredible resume. She's done a lot of things in her career. Okay. Um, I don't know how much job wise experience she has. She has 28 years like myself, all right? But there's, there's some flaws here. There's something not, I don't, I, I don't get why she, she said the guys had to go muster up and go to the barracks and get a squad car. She's had a take home car for her whole career, right? State troopers have take home. Everyone knows that. That's right. That's we something that's in the driveway. That's, I mean, anyone who lives in Massachusetts as, knows that. And as a detective with the uh, CPAC, I know this. I worked with CPAC all up in Springfield, Mass. The whole time, they all have cars. We have to. They have calls. They have to. They have to be sent out. So for her to come out and say they mustered up, they rallied up, and they they drove to the barracks, and they had to get a four wheel drive car. Listen, there's a uh, uh, well. She was on your show the other night, Trisha Martin. Though she has pictures. She lives down the street of her dog. There was not much stuff. The, the timestamp was right there. Come on, this is crazy. It, it, this is crazy. It is. This. Come on. What, what are we doing? I, I'm yeah. telling. I, I said this a thousand times. What are we doing talking about this? It's right there. I love that but you brought up the, uh, the the uh, the the guest for the last show was phenomenal. Uh, the with the fucking random citizens from Canton. They were amazing. We should talk more about that too. But I also want to ask about Coffin Daffer. Today, she today she went after Aiden. She went after Turtle Boy, and she called him a scammer. She said that he was scamming money because he was admitting that he had these merchandise items that he was putting out, and sixty percent would go to the Karen Reed Fund, and forty percent would go to him. 
there's obviously a cost for merchandise that he's providing. I'm guessing that there's a tax issue too. Like when I, I raise money without a nonprofit, sometimes I'm paying tax on that. Like it's, you know, so I, I don't feel like, and you know, the big thing for me is he's transparent. He's telling you exactly what you're, he's doing. You don't like it. Don't do it. She called him a scammer. Then she changed the, uh, changed it, you know, cause people like myself were saying like, that's libel. Like you're, that's not a scam. He's telling you what he's doing. So she exactly. edited it four times, edited the tweet four times, and then she deleted it. And like, this is the type of shit she does. And then she doesn't like acknowledge she was wrong, apologize. I mean, to me, she just something like, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with her. Something's not right. Mike, I, I, I listen, I try to figure it out. I've, I don't watch it anymore. If she doesn't engage me, we can have a beautiful conversation. She doesn't know the case. She's getting she she's getting information. FBI agent. She has an FBI office in Chelsea, Mass. She could call up. I can call the DEA any office in in the in the in the world. I could call them and say, "Hey, listen, off the record, or you know, we we do this." She has she knows what's going on. It's just that everyone has motives. What's her motive? I mean. To, to stir the pot what's wendy's motive she's a she's an esteemed well lawyer. Wendy, wendy i'm glad you said that because i have a motive for wendy wendy's motive is easy jennifer i can't figure out jennifer i think it's more about media clicks maybe she wants to write a book she wants to be on tv but wendy it's obvious wendy if you look at who wendy is and what she represents wendy mostly represents children and women who have been abused and so what are they looking for they're looking for justice from the courts and a lot of times that's Wendy talking to the cops, talking to law enforcement, talking to prosecutors. Those are her friends. I know Wendy, especially through her son. This sure. is mostly what I know about her through her son, but that's who she is. She gets power and influence over being friends with cops, being friends with the former governor of Massachusetts, who's a Republican, Charlie Baker. I know she was very good friends with him. So that's how she gets extra influence in the courts is when she walks in there, she knows Adam Lally. She knows Michael Morrissey. She knows all these DAs because she's asking them to prosecute criminals for you know the benefit of her clients a lot of times. Sure. Or to you know serve a restraining order, which you know a lot of it is great work. Like I I I like Wendy for that shit, but there is something really off about Wendy, and it's the lying. You know when you go up there and lie about people and. And like, look at her. She her whole life is defending women and children. She posted that comment about Karen Reed, which is so disgusting. It's like oh, yeah. you threw all your credibility away. It's like me being a cannabis guy and then making fun of medical cannabis patients. It's like, right. what the hell are you doing? So no. there's something not right about Wendy. I'll say that. You want to comment more about Wendy too? I, I you know, some I, I don't want to give her any attention because she she ruined herself with that statement. That was a. That was a low, sh a low blow. You don't do that to someone who's presumed innocent. She's got her convicted. She knows better than that. And she's, she's, you know, like I said, and, and the FBI agent, she, I've read her resume. I read with all the things she's did, she's done in her life. She lost me when she said she was responsible for taking the uh, Medellin cartel down. Come on. The Medellin cartel was taken down a long time ago, way before she came on the job. It was basically splintered. And my buddies that I know personally, Kenny McGee, Javier Pena, and Mike Murphy, did the job with the Colombian National Police. There were no FBI agents there. So come on. What are we talking about here? Narcos, yeah. Javier Pena, Mike Murphy. Come on. I, I know these guys personally. There was no FBI. And matter of fact, when the FBI is overseas, they call legal. They got one agent in the embassy that handles like four or five countries, and they go out and interview American citizens that are wronged or whatever. She said she worked some case that took down the Medellin cartels. Come on. So, you know, there's puffing up, there's resume building. I'd like to have cases built, build on cases, not on resumes. Here's a comment from Davy Girl on YouTube. She says uh, about Wendy Murphy, she talked about Karen getting raped in prison. That's exactly what oh, she did. Right. She's really kind of like off right. your rocker. Someone else posted on YouTube, Duke Lacrosse case is all you need to know about Wendy. I would say people should look into that one too. Uh, we found a document too where she was 
you know, sanctioned by the court for not being, you know, I don't want to misquote it, but it's basically she wasn't being truthful. <laughs> that's yeah. what the court said, yeah. and she got sanctioned yeah. for it. So, you know. Uh, yeah, that's, I can't figure it out. I can't figure the agent out, what she's doing. I think she's, listen, she's taking the side, and she's being, evidently, she's being fed wrong information. I Listen, I get it. I made one statement. I got attacked five different ways. It's fine. I got it. But I don't. She doesn't engage me. I don't know why. I'm just a regular guy here. We did the job. We, we went through Quantico at the same time, right? DEA got their own academy afterwards. When I went through Quantico, we had agents and FBI agents, DEA agents, walking the corridors together, doing joint exercises in Hogan's Alley, right? Come on, she knows better. This is a new development, I guess, because I didn't realize this. Wendy has, you know, written for the Boston Herald for a while. She's been a frequent contributor to different TV shows and networks. She's often on court TV. And uh, Aiden, the doctor, is telling us. The daddy. She is not. Yeah, the daddy. Daddy is listening. I love this. Daddy is listening. Daddy's He's here. telling us now she is banned from court TV over these tweets. Wow. Wow. Like she's, That's a big you stand. know, when this all happened, I was just sitting there like, wow, Wendy's life has changed. Wendy's really like, she has really stepped in into it and it uh, looks like it really has cost her. Yeah. I mean, it's a shame. I, like I said, I listen, I see it on the golf course. When people get older, I see it on the golf course. There's a lot of old, older people down here from year to year. You don't know what these people are doing. Maybe something's going on. I don't know. I'm not a doctor and I'm not a daddy. The daddy is watching. Yes, daddy's great, man. People are caught like re reacting to his comments right now, too. They're like, and it's uh they're saying you can join the live. They're letting them know. Young jerk said daddy can call in. Of course he can call in. Sure. I, I may have to check my Twitter to see if he he's probably got his kids right now. He's probably watching with his kids. Let him let daddy have a night with the kids, not us sure. kids, his real kids. It's by a lot. I mean, unless he wants to come, I'd welcome it, but you know, I don't I don't want to pressure him tonight. I, I definitely want him back on sure. the show, though. Believe me. There he is. Ha ha. Daddy's here. Daddy's here. That was beautiful. That was great. Yeah. So people are going off on Wendy. Um, I want to talk about more about what's going on at the town of Canton because this is really fascinating. We had that last episode with two uh, fucking random citizens, and we're going to get more like uh, Canton Confidential. That crew is planning on coming on the show. I don't know when the next show is. But like I said, my schedule is crazy right now with the dog biz, but I'm, sure. I, I just want to, I did three shows in a week, which I haven't done in a while. So I would love to do three shows again this week. We'll see what happens, but Canton confidential. That crew is definitely going to come on the show. Uh, we had a great uh, show last, you know, when was it Wednesday night with, with the, with the fucking random citizens of Canton. Yeah. What did you think about them and even just all the testimony, what they've been throwing at the, at the town hearings? Have you seen that? What do you think? Oh, I, I've been, I've been, I've been involved the whole time. And I, and unfortunately, uh, I know John Conley, uh, I wouldn't say very well. I went to school with him, both high school and a college. He was a couple of years behind me. Um, he is, he has helped me out with a couple of issues with my dad had because he's 94 at the time i have a, i have a lot of respect for john i think listen this this thing that happened is unfortunate i think everyone is affected everyone's on edge up there because i think i think they got sold a bag of goods i really do i feel very bad for tommy theater tommy theater was a classmate of mine i wish i could talk to tommy i want to keep it um sterile but i know the kid's trying uh, tommy he's trying to do his best but you talk about Kelleher? Like, no, Tom, no, Tommy, uh, Tommy Theodore. Oh, okay. he's the chair right now. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That's, that's I felt bad. I felt bad yeah. for him because I know his heart's in the right place. But they're conflicted, just like the police department's conflicted. They conf how can you sit next? You have a select board member who's yeah. a family member of maybe one of the prime suspects. If you take my side, he's the father of one, the prime suspect. He's the brother of the other one, and the. Crime scene is at his brother's house. His brother is a cop. I mean, how more conflicted can you get? How can these guys operate as a as a board? And listen, you know, I don't know Chris Albert from from Adam. He's in a tough position. Let's face it. But I would have thought 
he may have stepped down for the good of the town. He's not liked. He will never be liked. I mean, he's he's one and done. He'll never get re, he'll never get voted back in. So just leave, leave. Like that girl said, you gotta go. She's you gotta go. Kristen's you gotta go. Kristen okay. Anderson. I didn't reach out to you yet, but I will. She was great. You gotta Rita. go, kid. Yeah, you gotta Dude, go. You gotta go. Time to go, buddy. Time to go. It's, it's so many it's weird. Like, it's like, dude, you're not admitting anything by just saying, you know what? This controversy just, we can't do it anymore. And especially, yeah. e- like, even beyond the murder. Like, let's just leave that out. Let's just pretend right. if in, in a world that murder never happened, John O'Keefe is still alive. Dude, right. your people are pissed at you because you have, I don't know how many it is, but it's a, it's a ridiculous amount of liens against you. And you're not yeah. showing up to court to pay. You're not, you're, 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 you know, it's, you're being a deadbeat. You're a total deadbeat. You can't pay the pepperoni man as, as uh, yeah. uncle said, you know, it's just a doctor said, so, you know, it just, and, and the whole substance abuse thing, he couldn't even name the board that he was on. It's just That's like, tough. That's tough. Mm-hmm. it's like, dude, you need to go. Like it's, it's, it's I, even I, beyond what happened that night. Even myself, I was cringy. I really was. When they asked, they asked because I knew they were going down that road. I thought, I, listen, everyone has a heart. I felt bad. I did. I, I did, too, I in bad. a way. But I, I felt felt, But I, I did. It's weird. You no, know? I know. It's like, I know. It, it was. You got to so, have. Jesus. Yeah. But step down. But, but Mike, yeah, get, and get it. Back he doesn't this. have to deal with that. Like, if people it wasn't would, for this. Uh, would like him so much more. And it's not like they're going to love him. But, you know. People would have so much more respect for this guy if he just said, you know what? I heard you. Right. I'm done. I heard you. Mike, the, the, the problem here is, had it not been for that murder, none of this would have been exposed. Yep. They did a deep dive on him. They did a deep dive on him. They did a deep, deeper dive on the police department. Let's face it. There's a lot of money being made up in that department. And they got caught with their pants down. Let's face it. This is a... This is a this is a crazy response to professional police officers that failed. They failed the town. They got an answer for that. The state police is going to have their own problems. But you know, I feel bad for the Canton cops. But the story will come out. It eventually, everything gets. If it's not in the wash, it comes out in the rinse. It will come out. Yeah, absolutely. We know this. It just takes time. It just takes time. Right. And that's why I'm confident on what we're doing here too, because I feel like no matter what the naysayers say. I'm confident how this is going to end up. Like we're going to find out that we're right. That Aiden is right on this. That Listen. Sean is right on this. I've got a question. Someone Listen. said, "Is Lucky's brother really a Canton, Canton Town selectman?" I did not hear that. Is that true? Do you know? Yes, he is. Yeah, it's Michael. Yeah, yeah, he's Mike. He's the guy. He was to the okay. As you look on the screen, he was to the right of the uh, Charlie Duty. He was the guy with the glasses. Taking the, he was the secretary taking the minutes. Okay. Mike, Mike Lawson. That is okay. That is Mike. So you now you have, now you have another air level of Jesus Christ. But the problem is everybody's intertwined in this case. Even I didn't know it. When I grew up, I knew the cops, but I didn't know their whole legacy. It was a legacy department. Everyone, like you know Tommy Kelleher, right? Yep. I, I don't know Tommy. him, but I knew his dad. I knew his dad. He was an okay guy. You know, listen, everyone has issues, right? But this thing just, you know, I feel bad. The magnifying glass is so on top of them. They can't move. They can't move. And it's going to get worse. I'm telling you, it's going to get worse. Exactly. That's their life now. Like, it's never going away. Like, that's the thing with Chris Albert. It's so much better for him if he just, he's got to go. Got to go. Uh, I want to ask more about Rafferty because you, you sent the open letter to her. We started with that. She hasn't responded. Then she showed up at town hall and she gave a speech. She was supposed to talk about something else. Then she started talking about the case, but it was more about allegations against her. And she didn't actually answer the questions of the citizens. And she left. She didn't have any comment. You know, she didn't allow any questions, which I think is really strange. Um, and now she's offering people one-on-one meetings to people she likes. Not she won't meet with Aiden, I guess. Uh, she'll just you know pick and choose who she meets with, and that's what she's offering citizens now. The citizens came back at this last meeting and said, "No, we want an open meeting with her. We want her to answer our questions in public. Um, it's your job as selectman 
you're her boss. We're your boss. I, you know, so the bosses are asking that she has to come in. We we can't just say, no, you do what you can. No, we're demanding you come in, Chief Rafferty. Uh, what do you think about all of that? Do you think it's almost like people are saying it's an embarrassment that she she won't even voluntarily do this? What do you think about her and their response on, on this in terms of citizens want answers? Okay. I, I do not know Helena. I knew her dad. I grew up, he was, he was a bigger than life type of guy, Irish guy. He had the same brogue as my father. I told her in the letter. We never crossed paths. However, I think I was a counselor when she went by uh, Quantico. She went to the National Academy. I was representing DEA with the Peruvian National Police at the same time she was there. We probably crossed the halls and didn't even know it. I think I was there when my, um, Chief Berkowitz was going through the academy. But she needs to be more transparent. I know she's hiding behind the fact that um, she can't talk about the case. We talked about this the other day, Mike. You know, I have a source that recounted an episode outside Brian Albert's house, right? Where she went to kneel and uh, pray, right? And she got accosted by Brian, asked her a bunch of questions, get the hell out of here. It wasn't that, get out. And um, next thing, he follows her, takes her to a house around the corner, and one of her sergeants comes in and makes a complaint on, well, it takes her ID. If I, would, if I had Tommy Theater right here, I would say, this is a perfect example where you can, as a board member, suspend Chief Rafferty right now, restore some credibility with that board. You tell the Canton townspeople that you're taking action. You do a, a, you do a, a simple investigation on that incident. That woman is ready to come forward. That woman identified the officer on that picture the other night. This would be a perfect opportunity. Now, she's not going to lose any money. It's just a suspended with pay, but give the town what they want. It's not about the select board. You saw the select board. It's about trust. Nobody is trusting law enforcement in that town. They're not trusting the select board. What an, what an incredible opportunity. Someone on that board could say, listen, let's give them what they want. Do a little investigation. They, they, she responds to them. She reports to them. If it's an IA investigation, they get the complaint and they farm it out. This would be a perfect opportunity to give all those women and gentlemen that speak up courageously and say, my God, just give us something. Give us leadership. It's not going to hurt her. Just investigate. They, she can't do an independent investigation on her own. She's conflicted. That's it. I've seen it in many departments. I've seen it in my own agency. You got a problem? Like Brian Higgins. I guarantee he's not on the street. There's a cloud over him. Put him off the side. He doesn't lose money. But let's, let's wait and see what happens. This would be an incredible opportunity for Tom Theodore as the chair to say, okay, we're going to give the Canton residents some peace. That's what I would do. The doctor made a comment about Chris Albert. He said he might be in jail by the next election. You never know. Probably true. It could definitely happen. All right. uh, I got some more comments coming in. I like this one. Steve C says, I'm a Republican and conservative, but I'm taking a liking to the young jerks. You should. Why wouldn't you? Of course. You know, I think, too, people uh, think I'm like, you know, Aiden said it, a radical left. I mean, I, I ran with that. It's funny because some real extremists called us Antifa radio at one point, which was kind of funny. I ran with that too. But for me personally, I feel like I'm actually moderate. Like, honestly, I, I do. Like, I, I am conservative in a lot of my personal values in a lot of ways, except I smoke weed. I'm pretty much a square guy, you know, but, but I think the progressives have a lot of the best ideas in this world right now. So, you know, I guess that's where I go, but it, either way, like, I don't, we've done a lot of politics on the show and Aiden has too, or turtle boy on his show. And I feel like both of us are similar in this. What we've actually gotten the most attention about is the politics. I've had Ayanna Presley on the show. I've had Rachel Rollins, the U S attorney on the show. I've had recently, yeah. even the cannabis control commissioner chief, the, you know, former, the first woman elected to statewide office, Shannon O'Brien on the show. And you know, those shows do good. People listen, but for us, I think what most got its traction even before all this turtle boy stuff 
was our investigations, exposing corruption. And I think that's where Turtle Boy and I are just like 100% together. And, and why we actually come together on this stuff is like, it's our bread and butter. And it's kind of what I want to do more of. And I don't care if you're left, right, center. If you want to expose fraud and help us get rid of some bad stuff that happens, then this is the show for you. Just like Turtle Boy is the show for you. And I'd say that for people who are moderate or progressives too. Like politics should matter when you're exposing corruption. That's Nonpartisan right. issue. So yeah, I'm glad you're here. Got a lot more comments. I, I, there's much more I want to talk about. I want to talk about the federal investigation. You're a Fed. I'm sitting here with a former DEA supervisory agent, 28 years, Sean McDonough. Sean on the Gulf. Did I say your last name? It is McDonough, right? McDonough. McDonough, yes. Huh. Down love here it. in the South, they can't do it. But up there, that's, that's an Irish here. name. We know that. I'm a, I, you yeah, know, well, my my family, course. County Cork. You know, I'm an Irish Catholic, yeah. like, on every single side of my yeah. family. It's like, so, you know, I, I love my I'm, father's I'm, from Galway, came over from Galway, youngest of 14. So there you go. And um, so I, I want to talk about the federal stuff because you put out a great just explaining to people what a federal grand jury is, because that was something that Aiden led with for a long time. And we knew that there was something going on. I, you know, it's funny because I, I, I really want to know what Aiden knew when he knew it. Because I feel like he knew probably that he did because he was hinting at it. And then we got 100% confirmation like just a few weeks ago when uh, the young man we found got served at Bridgewater State University, Colin Albert, for the federal grand jury. He got subpoenaed. He, he's going to be either, you know, he either he testified or he pled the fifth. We don't even know. Right. But we know something's going on. We know there's a federal grand jury. It was confirmed what Aiden was saying. Um, people don't know what that means. I mean, I have an understanding because I know yeah. people who have been under federal grand juries. Sure. Uh, tell us what that could mean to people. Okay. And, and we'll talk more about kind of where we think this might be going. Okay. Basically, federal grand jury is an investigative tool, right? Generally speaking, a federal agency like DEA, the FBI, ATF, will initiate an investigation, right? They will work towards getting their targets, collecting the evidence, and if they come into a, a blockage, right, or they make an arrest and the guy's cooperating, maybe they'll impanel a grand jury, okay? Um, so the grand jury process is very simple. It's a secret process. You have 18 to 22 people sitting in a room, bringing in witnesses with a federal prosecutor. It's one-sided. Uh, generally speaking, if you come with a subpoena, you're gonna have a, probably a, a defense attorney next to you because if you get a subpoena, there's two types of witnesses, one that come voluntarily because they're friends of the government or they come under subpoena. If the person's inclined to testify, they will not go into the grand jury by themselves first. They'll sit down with two agents, maybe the prosecutor, and they're giving a timeout. It's called a, a proffer agreement. So this is where two agents and the, the target, not the target, but the witness, all right, the potential witness sits down and gives a debriefing. What do you know? What you say cannot be used against you. However, if you tell us things, we can follow up on, but we won't, we can't use your words against you. So a classic example would be, for instance, say one of the one of the people in the house. Let's take Brian Higgins. Classic example. He didn't come forward when he should have, right? He's got immense pressure on him. But he's got a, a an attorney who's a former U.S. attorney knows the system very good. Now, listen, I, I'm just, don't take my word for it. I'm just giving an example. They're going to work out an agreement with him. They're going to work out, first of all, they're going to give him a proper agreement. He'll be protected. His attorney is right there. Okay, Brian, what happened? He tells the story that John was in that house, but he didn't touch him. It's over. But they have to have, they have, to have a cooperating. They need some kind of cooperation. You can't convict someone on one side one person's testimony without backup, but they'll take this whole statement. They'll say, okay, do you sign to this? They'll then come out with a plea agreement. He will plea, he'll agree to plea to a charge, some type of charge. He let a guy die. He let an innocent woman get framed. He's a federal agent. He was duty bound 
to take action. Okay. But going into the hypothetical scenario, then he, then he gets waltzed into the grand jury. Or maybe he's not. Maybe he agrees to wear a wire. See, the thing about this whole process is back in the late 80s, early 90s, the federal, uh, judge, federal judges were under the sentencing guidelines, and it took all discretion away from judges. They were bound to the sentence. So if you got grabbed with five kilos of cocaine, five kilograms of cocaine or more, you're going to jail for 10 or 15 years. Mandatory. The only way to get under that is called a Rule 35, where you give substantial evidence. So that's, the, yeah. that's the trick bag to allow a judge to say, hey, listen, my client cooperated. He did A, B, C, and D. The judge accepts it. He accepts the Rule 35. That now gives him the ability to depart from the mandatory sentence. And you do 85% of the time. So a guy gets 20 years. He's doing 85% of the time. All right? So that's an example. And then he may, he may make phone calls. He may walk into a crowd of people that know about this case and start talking. He's recording it. Right? Then he goes to the grand jury, gives a story. They introduce the wire evidence. They introduce whatever he did, right? And then they get tucked away. Okay, Brian, just be cool, or maybe they protect him. Maybe maybe someone gets wind that he's cooperating. But then again, this is how I did this. I've done this. This is how it works. For the people that don't cooperate, okay, they bring you in. The the attorney, like say in Jim McCabe's case, she has Kevin Reddington. He's no fool. He's going to say, okay, what's going on here, guys? He's going to, he's, it's a dance. He's looking for information. The prosecutor's looking for information. It's a little dance. It's a give and take. If I'm Kevin Reddington, Jen McCabe's not testifying unless he, she has some sort of protection. And it all depends if if her information is valuable. I don't believe she delivered any blow, but her the weight of her testimony, the weight of her, the value of her information could be weighted. Saying, "Okay, we may go with you on this. We may let you plead. We'll give you a plea agreement to a lesser charge. If not, you're going down for conspiracy." And everyone's getting hung up on murder and all this other stuff. When the mob is investigated, all the murders come up at trial. Whitey Bulger, all those murders got surfaced, right? They were all charged in that. They're charged with RICO. They're charged with conspiracy. They're charged with wire fraud. Wire and, and wire they're fraud. Yeah, exactly. Everything. So many crimes. Right. If you right. just order a hit in Rhode Island or you're in Massachusetts, that's like five federal crimes. Yeah. Like it's like crossing state lines, yeah. interstate train. This is the whole gamut. Murders are there too. They all went down for murder. They had Matarana con- confess to what? 19 murders, he's out in three years? Come on. It's, but then again, you weigh, you weigh the testimony. How value is that person? Sometimes you've got to make a deal with the devil. We do it. We have done it. But in this case, they may have had the whole thing and never needed a witness. Because what's the FBI very known for? Wiretaps. Yeah, intelligence. Who knows they, what they, they have? They can listen and watch everything. And that includes the, the texts and everything. They... They know every. They'll get everything. They, you won't even know who, it either. That's the thing. Until after, who knows what was going on prior to this case? I don't know, but I've, my own personal experience, we've caught things. We're on something like whatever, a thousand pounds of marijuana coming in. Next thing, uh, the the main tiger calls another guy in L.A. He says, "Hey, do you have that uh, three hundred kilos of co- uh, cocaine ready?" Holy shit, now we have to, now we have yeah, to. I got uh, two cases. These, yeah, you know, right. This surprise call comes in. Maybe they're on, maybe they were on, who knows, some public corruption thing. And they're up on a, a prime phone. And next thing, whoa, someone's saying, hey, we got a problem in Canton. I'm, this is a theory. This is hypothetical. Th- let me ask this you that, because there's a lot of angles this goes in. We're getting a lot of comments and questions, too, on it. People want to know about Steve Scanlon. You mentioned Brian Higgins. Oh. I love Jesus. how you get into stuff before we even, you know, the, the people are asking for it online. You're already answering it. I but do. I want to ask yes, about this angle because, you know, uh, Turtle Boy said Ali McCabe got served. Colin got served. Uh, Brian Higgins. The two of them are young people. Like, what could that really mean? And and beyond that, there's also that whole Sandra Birchmore case, which has gotten a lot of coverage right. recently. Kirk Minahan's done a series on it now. Um 
he's another popular guy out there in Boston, he's a barstool sports guy. And and basically, like Sandra Birchmore is so like connected to this in a way because it's one of the Alberts was there. Some of the same co Canton cops responded to it. Happened in Canton. Woman found. They said she did suicide, but it sure looks like a, her cop boyfriend probably killed her. So, like, do you think that's where this started? Do you? What do you think? It, it could be. It, it could be. It could be anything. But getting back to what you said about uh, the people who served, during, we know for sure. I don't know about Ali. I don't have the information, but we know for sure who Kevin Rennington, Pia Turtle, he he broke it, that Jen McKay was served to subpoena. But it's just that's what I find. Colin, uh, Colin Albert was served to subpoena. All in, this all happened in April. I will go out on a limb here. I'm pretty sure that everyone at that house was given a subpoena. It doesn't make sense to have two given subpoenas. Right? I would I would venture to say that Brian Albert received a subpoena, Brian Higgins issued a subpoena, some other people issued subpoenas because they're corralling, they're, they're surrounding everyone in this case. Some of the extraneous witnesses, who knows? I don't know what they have. I'd love to see their case file. I don't know why, what's her name? Jen Coffinhaggers. <laughs> I don't know. I, I Coffin Daffer. She's Daffy, Daffer. She, she could have off the record information. I'd love to be able to do that. You know, I don't know why she hasn't knocked on the door of the Boston office. It's easy. It's gonna be interesting. People have more questions yeah. too. Questions are coming in like crazy. People want to know about Scanlon. We've heard something about this guy Scanlon. What do you think about wow. this guy Scanlon? Was he one of wow. the first leakers? Who, who, what's his deal? Okay. Well, like I said, I, my my information is is like everyone else. I but I did see. Uh, the initial arraignment, the first arraignment that Karen had, and I remember uh, Davian Netty really getting up front and saying, "Listen, this is a this is this is a tragedy. This is a travesty, right?" But he had all I know he had was just the 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 affidavit in support of the arrest. Very germane. He even said in his last hearing, "I didn't have one police report. I just had this affidavit. I read the affidavit." It doesn't really say much, right? Two days later, guy knocks on his door. Guy out of the blue says, listen, this is not an accident. This kid beat John O'Keefe. And it was a brutal fight. And they they framed your client. Now, no not two days into this, nobody had nobody had information. Not one person had information he did that means someone with first-hand information either my guess if i had to put money down i'm not a gambler i'd say brian higgins he started having a conscience he listen he's it's he's it's got the booze is wearing off all right they're all drinking all day long everyone's high five and all this other crap then they go down the waterfall it's a snowstorm he departs that house for a reason. Goes to the Canton office. God knows what he's doing. There's a thing called administra administratively uncontrollable overtime, AUO. An agent's not going to get his two hours in at one o'clock in the morning after drinking. It's a little side joke. He left that. He left that house for a reason. Now, is he setting up the cover up, or is he having some kind of conflicted? He's he's conflicted. The kids. The guy's a federal agent. He's not family. He's different. And, and if, if it did happen in that house, he's, he's in the trick bag. He knows what happened. He didn't save that guy. Now, was he threatened? I don't know. But he didn't go to the cops. He didn't go to the supervisor. He let an innocent woman stand be, before a judge. He could have he wiped his hands right then and there. He, why didn't he? That's why I feel very hard that he's going to have any true leniency. He better have a lot of he better have been one of the first ones in. I don't think he was, to, to be honest. I don't see it. I think it came after. If he did, it's probably he came afterwards. The award-winning uh, journalist has uh, made some more comments. He says, uh, and that's Aiden Kearney. Kearney. No. He says, uh, Scanlon cannot be charged. They want to know how he knew what happened by February 3rd before anyone else. Right. Scanlon can't be charged in this. He's not a part of it. As a matter of fact, he... 
he gave his story. He can't, he cannot be charged. He wasn't at the house. Right. He's a, what do we call it? A tipster. Right. He got, he got first, first hand information. He delivers it. Right. He didn't want to go the whole distance, sign an affidavit. No, he can't, he can't get charged. But getting back to the grand jury, well, what we've done, a guy like that, we put him in the grand jury right away. You immunize him. Now you tell your story. You don't, you don't want to, you don't want to tell the story. You go to jail for contempt. And you, the grand jury lasts 18 months. I don't know when the grand jury started. Let's say it started just before the subpoenas were being hanged out. Well, you have another, it's 18 months. You have another year and six months, right? He can go to jail until he's willing to testify. That's a great tool to use. He's immunized. He can't get hurt. This, I, I would do that. I've done that. The U.S. attorney, that's a bread and butter for someone like him. He's prime. Make he's got to make him talk. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like it's, you know, come on. Where's the moral code of ethics here? Exactly. Where's the morality? He's some, I don't know if he's a sheriff, the deputy sheriff. I don't know. He's got to have some moral fiber. All these people should have had some more moral fiber. And the more this time goes on, it's beneficial to Karen, the more stuff is coming up. I don't care what they say, the prosecution, find a microscopic uh, uh, plastic things in his clothes. Come on. Let's stop this. Stop the nonsense. Stop the I, nonsense. Yeah. They know. They know. I got to give you a uh, huge props right now, Sean. The, the audience loved you, number one. But even beyond that, one of the things I always look at is the numbers, like as they come in, like, you know, who's listening? And often what you see is your numbers kind of peak and then you start dropping off. People start, you know, they get the idea of what you're, they got other things to do. Our numbers have just kept going up all night. And the longer you talk, and they're even telling me at times, Jesus. Mike, shut up and let Sean just talk more. And I love yeah. that. It's like, yeah, I'll, I'll shut up now. You're awesome. I, I, I don't, I just, I'm a passionate guy. I, I, I go all in, I go all in. And that's sometimes works. Sometimes it doesn't work for me, but in this case, I'm all in. I have to be, I, I believe in her. I believe in her. I don't even know her. I wish I had the file. I wish I had what she has. I would, I could look at this and figure it out just like that. I, I know there's so much we talk about in terms of all the cast of characters, all the, you know, what be the media commentators like we talked about tonight and the and the father of the suspects and you know, just all these idiots. But the story is really about two people. It's about Karen and John. And like they exactly. seem like such good people. Like I, I just look at them when their pictures are together. Like we start our intro tonight. We we put the picture of them together. Cause just ah, man, yeah. it makes me like look at my life and just say, Jesus Christ, like love your moment. Cause like, I feel really happy right now in my life. And you, you just don't know when that's not going to be like that anymore. It's just so short. Just, and they were just having another night, like having a good night, having a good right. family. They got these two kids are taken care of and it's right. gone. It's gone. And it's like these two. So I, I'm glad you brought up Karen tonight because I feel like both yeah, of them. He, we sometimes we all forget about Karen and John. That's really what this is about. You know, and I, I have to say I'll, I'll go one step further. Everyone really is. Everybody's really forgetting about John. He died a brutal death. I mean, he was not technically dead in the medical uh, medical terms. Think about that. No matter. Okay, whatever. If it happened outside. The brutality he suffered. People forget about that. And here's the other thing. All right. You know, they talk about crossing the blue line or, you know, you're a turncoat, Sean. You went against us. I've heard, I've heard it all from cops. I know cops. I was in Canton. I had dinner with uh, several cops before I came out with this letter. I haven't heard one. I haven't had one phone call from them. Not one. And these were friends of mine. Uh, maybe it's, uh, it's too polarizing for them, but. He was a cop. What about him? Everyone keeps forgetting that. You have a this was blue on blue from the day from day one. And I just I feel terrible. I feel terrible for Karen. She's I just I, I feel awful. I really do. Yeah, I for John. It's like you could see this guy was a good guy. He took care of the, those two kids. Like My that God. to me. Steps up. He was to a the good plate. guy. I, I could just see right. it too. Yeah. It's sad because here's the problem. 
She's going to get exonerated. People are going to go to jail on this. Those poor kids have to relive this whole thing over again. That's going to be traumatizing. I just wish someone from the O'Keefe family could just step out of the box and just kind of take a look at this from a different perspective. You don't have to agree with anything. Just get out of that box you're in. Just look at it from a different perspective. I do. Every day I look at, okay, how could this have happened? Could have happened this way. But I keep going back to the evidence. You can't deny the evidence. You, you can't. can't. That's it. You it. can't deny it. I mean, there's so many basic things. Like the fact that Albert never came out of the house. Kelleher never came out of the house. Yeah. The cops never interviewed. I mean, they'll go back to the basics like you brought earlier. It's just so right. many things that is going to allow Karen free to go. Karen Reed to go free, in my opinion. No doubt, no, whether it's through a trial or they drop the charges. Right. There's no way. I agree with Aiden on this. I agree with him so much. on. There's no way she can be convicted. It's, it's just ludicrous. They're yeah. wasting our time and money, and they're not I'm going after the real people who did this. That's what really sucks. The, the 17th question I asked Chief Rafferty was this, and this is very important. I said to her, I said, have you cautioned your officers about their responsibility under Brady about providing if they have knowledge of any any exculpatory evidence, their duty to turn it over to the courts, to be handed to the defense? If there's one cop in there holding back that he has knowledge that this was not done above board and he knows that they're being framed and they're framing up an innocent woman, that cop is duty bound under Brady to provide defense, the exculpatory. So is in the prosecution. I think Aiden hit it on pretty good. I think, I do think Aiden has a little bit more knowledge than he wants to admit because he did say something last night that caught my attention. Maybe he he'll drop right it on words. the show. He said he just dropped a note that he wants to come on the show. Uh, so I'm going to send good. him an instant message on Twitter right now. And give him okay. a link. And um, I, I actually want to ask him about that. But I also want to ask you, too. Is there anything that you've been kind of leaked uh, from law enforcement about that you haven't shared, that you haven't been able to share? I have sources, right? Um, I will say Chief Rafferty uh, actually confirmed one of my sources. I It may mean nothing. It was something that was looked upon that uh, this guy's crazy, right? He did call the Canton Police Department to report drug activity. Now, there's, there's a theory, right, that he gave, I know, I know the person he gave up. I know exactly who the person he gave up. I'm not mentioning that name. But there's a theory that this person was connected to Colin. They lived houses from each other, okay? There's a video of the kid that he called on, right, that he called about doing drug deals on the street in front of John Sells. That's going to serve us, all right? But what happened to the investigation? Like what happened to the poor lady that got accosted? Here's the thing. The kid doesn't, the Albert doesn't come up when there's fire engines and cop cars and screaming. I've got to imagine Karen screaming. She's seen her loved one on the ground. It's 6 o'clock in the morning, dead in the middle of the morning early morning, it's got to be, the radios of the fire trucks are loud. They don't turn them down. They got to hear them. But yet he sees a girl praying to give him respects and it costs her. And then he calls the cops. He calls the same cop that was in his house a year late, a year before. That's crazy. That is absolutely insane. And how are you going to investigate that? He took her license, photo, he photographed her license, photographed her registration. He better have a report. That's a great opening for Tommy Theodore to say, okay, we're going to put a pause here. It's not case related to John O'Keefe or Karen Reed, but it's something they should investigate. Give the town something. Uh, people are going crazy in the comments. They want, they're like, Turtle Boy wants it. Let him in, let him in, let him in. <laughs> we just sent him the, the link. He's here. got the link. Daddy has the link on okay. Twitter. Hopefully, Daddy does call in because people want him. I will. We want him. We, 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 you would love to have Turtle Boy back on here, wouldn't you, Sean? Absolutely, absolutely. We're going to do uh, what's that thing called? Uh, surviving the survivor. We got bounced for a, a serial killer uh, family member. Absolutely. He brought me on his show early in this whole thing. It was great. 
He said daddy. Yes, he did. We're waiting for daddy right, to Jenna. show up for the class. Hopefully Bye. he shows up. He's probably getting his shit like set up right now. Hopefully. We'll see. He doesn't make it. He doesn't make it. He's, he, no. he said one oh, stack, one stack. stack. He's coming. Yeah. This is great. You can see all the comments. I, I didn't know we had this ability. This is, I guess I'm kind of lucky you didn't see it. The last show was on. Probot says, keep Sean talking. He just makes it all make more sense. I agree. So I, this is your open floor. Like you must have things that you haven't talked about that you want to talk about or things that you just want to say again. Cause I think repetition for all of us, it helps, you know, helps it helps us. So what do you want to all talk? Right, about? So we haven't touched, we haven't touched the state police investigation of this whole thing. Right. All right. So they let Karen leave uh, his aid. Beautiful. Turtle boy is here. What's up, Thank man? You. Not much. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Couldn't Good resist. Day. I couldn't resist. Good to see you. Good enjoying to the see conversation. You. So I thought I'd jump in. Cause I can't get enough of this. I can't stop talking about this story. It's 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 dominated my life for like five months. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. I wonder yeah, why. You I don't know. write about anything else. Like it's crazy. I used to write about different things every day. And now it's like this story. It's like I don't want to write about anything else. I'm just that I wrote about like a, a the Brockton public schools are missing $14 million. That's like the first non-Canton story I did. And I didn't want, I didn't want to do it. I was like bored with it. I'm like, I gotta get back to Canton. That should be a big story. I, I mean, know that... it should be <laughs> $14 million is missing from schools. Uh, yeah. Just the day before school starts and the principal's missing and the superintendent's missing. And it's, I guess that's just Brockton. I don't know, but that, that, that could happen in Canton. Yeah. It can happen with Chris issue. Albert, right? Well, it couldn't happen in Canton. That's the thing. It's like with, with, with a place like Brockton, it's like it happens there because, you know, you get the government you vote for. I feel like the vote, like the people of Canton wouldn't put up with that. Whereas like they take advantage of the people of Brockton because they like, what are you going to do about it? You know, there's $14 million missing, but what right. are you going to do about it? You know, whereas in Canton, I don't know, there's just something more when, when people are affluent, when they come from more affluent homes, they listen to more. They have it, more it, time too. They right, have, like, yeah. When you're poor, you don't have as much time. You're worried about your freaking bills. Yeah. Then or, you know, or, or the, you're not paying attention. Day. You know, so. But yeah, uh, this story, man. Uh, there's there's a couple things coming this week. Um, like Chris Albert might be in in, in trouble. I kind of hinted at it last night, uh, but he he was trying to get. He's trying to sue me. So he he's really pushing this angle. He's been talked into trying to sue me, I guess. And in order to do that, he's trying to push that I, what I've said is a lie. And so one thing I've said before is that his son called and made a phone call to a friend at 1233. And that I know is a fact that happened, a 100% fact. And what he's trying to do, I guess, is trying to get that person to retract their statement. But by doing so, he might have crossed the line there. Uh, witness intimidation like you're kind of he's kind of implying that like if you don't retract this statement that's harmful to my son then i'm gonna sue you and so you're using you know a, a threat there in a way to get you to change your testimony about something in a murder case and he's so stupid he just can't you know if we could have like a, a hierarchy of dumbest to smartest conspirators in this whole thing the smartest one is brian albert and then Brian Higgins. Those are the two smart ones because they've stayed far away from this as possible. They're the, they're the cops. They know what you know how to handle this. Whatever. The dumbest ones are. It's a it's a tough one. There's a lot of dumb ones here. But I would say uh, Colin and Chris Albert are probably one and two as like the dumbest ones. They can't help but stick their foot in it. Jen McCabe's up there. Matt McCabe's up. There's a lot of stupid ones on their side. But like the smart ones are the ones. That you never hear from, and that's Brian Albert and Brian Higgins. Do you have any any reason to think Wendy Wendy Murphy might be representing him on that? Right? <laughs> oh, we could we could only hope. We could only. I don't think Wendy's. Yeah. Does she have any clients? Does Does Wendy have clients? Like, does anybody who would ever pay that? I don't know where the income comes from. She must have like book sale royalty. She's got a nice house. I don't I'll know say that. I know she has a nice house. I bet she does. I, I really don't know where she gets her money from. Like, who is paying this woman's salary? Because uh, who would ever hire her? I, I even uh, what cases is she involved in? Well, I, I think she's probably going to have a tougher, tougher time now. 
I mean, this, I, I don't you think so? Don't you think this is like really kind of, I think people weren't really paying attention before. They just assumed she knew what she was doing. And that's the way it was presented to me on surviving the survivor. Like when I called her a liar, he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. She went to Harvard or something. I'm like, don't care. Don't care. She's a crazy person. Mm -hmm. Like It's like, listen to what she's saying. I don't care where she went to. Crazy people went to Harvard too. It doesn't mean anything. <clears throat> Crazy. Um, it's amazing too that some of the stuff you came out with too, like the uh, Lucky Lawfren stuff, Aiden. It's just amazing. Yeah, you know what's interesting about that is that you know we somebody pointed this out in uh, on Facebook. Somebody pointed out in, in the discovery there. It's been entered into evidence that the 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 full interview of Michael Proctor with Lucky Lawfren, and that happened two days after I wrote my story about that. That was so satisfying to know that Michael Proctor reads every blog we publish and, and, and reacts to it. Like he's, that means that he saw that blog and he's like, fuck, they found lucky law and they got lucky law to a talk. I'm in trouble now. I need to, I need to, I need to do something about this. I'm the investigating officer. I have to talk to the, to the plow guy, to the witness or, or else uh, it's going to look like I'm covering this up. So I have to go talk to this guy and I am dying to know what they talked about. I can imagine. I bet you anything they tried to get him to retract things that he said to me. I will bet you anything that they went in there and they said, well, are you sure? You know, maybe you just didn't look and we'll see if Lucky held the line. Either way, he did with, you know, he's got me and the private investigator. Like he told both of us the same story. So if, if he changes it now, he, it's like, I, I, we're going to find that hard to believe. But I have a feeling Lucky's going to hold the line. But then, Aiden, didn't he talk to the FBI? Then they right, and that's the other. Thing. There's three. There's three. Yeah. So like, <laughs> like I think Proctor. I am feeling so much better after the last week about this story. I just think the end is near. It's like I've said this before, but the fact that they're bringing in 19 year olds now, and they're bringing in Caitlin Albert and Brian Albert Jr. And remember what Mike Morrissey said during his speech there last week he said that there were 11 witnesses in the house and we were like i added up i'm like i had six or seven where's he getting 11 from well now we know now we know that he's like adding people to this he's adding ali mccabe to the he, he knew about ali mccabe he's adding uh caitlin albert is all of a sudden home i guess when this happened because why else is she being grand juried if she wasn't there you know uh brian albert jr i'm told is grand juried right? That is not a good sign for them. They are on the defensive. I think even in their minds now, they all know Karen Reed's not getting a, they're not think. no one's thinking about Karen Reed anymore. Uh, no. the, the focus, the, the focus now is like, how are we going to save ourselves from jail as a result of this? How are we going to keep our family from being broken apart here? Uh, everything, you know, our whole lives are about to get shattered. How it, the, Karen Reed is probably the last thing on their minds right now. Excellent. And, um, agree. Sean was talking about the state police and people are freaking out in the comments, which I get. I appreciate. They want to uh, hear what Sean was going to say about the state police, too. I think Turtle Boy might have something to say, Aiden, about it as well. Well, I mean, let's face it. Uh, so the Canton police allegedly hands it off to the state police. And like Aiden, you know, we can't find, and I asked Coffin Daffer this question. Everyone's told where I report on such and such a date and such and such a time. There were no time frames except when he's talking to Jen McCabe. Why was Jen McCabe the first one? Why were the in, why were the witnesses not separated? And why were they given the comfort of their own home? Take them down to the uh oh, but, but Did you see the newest report from Proctor? They were separated. That's the new story. He oh, added that line to the new report that they were separated. And isn't that interesting, though, how... Proctor is reading everything we're writing and responding sure. to them. It was almost like, it, like the, if I'm the prosecution, I'm almost like it's better off if turtle boy's not writing anything at all. Cause all it's get, it's just giving them a chance to make more shit up, but right. it makes them look more ridiculous. The more they do it, how are they going to, they're going to look silly telling a jury this. I don't, like I said, I don't even think they're thinking about that. I don't think they care. Uh, and you know, the people that are really being have the, the people that have been fooled the most by this are 
is John's family, who I don't really feel sorry for in that regard because they have minds of their own and they're able to think on their own. But like they put their faith in the system and the state and they've been dicked around and lied to this entire time. How are they going to feel when not only is Karen Reed exonerated, but these indictments come? What are they, what are they going to do? Are they going to go to the hearings for these people who they've been sitting with in court? Who have been rubbing their shoulders? Well, that, that's what you, I mean. You know, I, I, I hope they come on your show. Like I, I think that would be the most amazing show late. ever. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I have them on. I, I, I'd imagine have them on, if they all of a sudden like love you and realize. I would rip them apart though. Like if they came on, I'd be very honest with you. I'm like, how? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? How did you not? You know, all of this was there. This is your family, and all of this information was out there, and you just ignored it. Like this, like you, like, I'm sorry. Like this happens to me. If my worst enemy, like, how about this, Mike, for an analogy, Monica Cannon Grant, if, if Monica Cannon Grant was framed for killing me, and even though, you know, my family's not fond of Monica Cannon Grant, if there was all this evidence showing that she didn't do it, they wouldn't go along with it, even though they don't like her, you know, it's like, and, and that's what we can't read. It's like, we get that you don't like her. Okay. We got that but this is your son. This is your brother. There is overwhelming evidence showing that she didn't do this. So what satisfaction do you get out of getting, like if you suppose you put her in jail, you know, in your heart of hearts, she didn't do it. And you know that the real killers are out there. So how do you, how does that make you feel like anything was accomplished from this? Like, how do you feel whole? How do you have um, closure from this? You don't, it's just, I don't know what they're, they think they're doing, but it's not going to make them feel better. Yeah, I hope they uh, wake up a little bit. I, I, feel, I just feel like they're going on. I don't know. And I see somebody in the comments oh. asked about like, um, I got somebody, I think it was half hammer. Somebody asked uh, that Kevin, I guess from yellow cottage is saying that lucky has told them a different story. Lucky told Proctor a different story. I would ask how the hell would Kevin know that? Like, what, what is he, what are you talking about? Like, what is he talking about? If he, I haven't, I haven't heard him say that, but that's absurd. Absurd. If he actually said that, like, who's he, like, how is he going to know that? Come on. And, and lucky has told the story to the FBI, to me and to the private investigator. It's too sure. late. He can't change the story. It is what it, and he's sticking to it. He has to stick to it. Yeah, we got a lot of comments about it. People are saying it's denial. They don't want to believe the other scenario. Well, eventually, uh, with all these facts pointing, I mean, as soon as you see that autopsy photo, I've heard from, I got one message, you know, I couldn't confirm this. The guy says he kind of knows Paul O'Keefe and that he's really starting to ask a lot of questions. And the biggest thing on his mind is the dog scratches, right? He can't get over those because those, I mean, how are they going to explain how a car did that? Cause they can't say, I heard some idiots on court TV talking about how, well, uh, me, that could easily come from if he was under the car and it ran over him and there's sharp things in there and it could did. Okay. So if, if you're saying the car went over him, that means the car was on the lawn. So why are there no tire marks on the lawn? There's none. So like that theory is that no matter what theory they come up with, there's going to be a way to explain how that couldn't possibly have happened. And that's why they don't come up with a theory. Because no matter what they say, it's going to be stupid. Now, do you want to talk about uh, Coffin Daffer? She, she said some crazy shit and then took it down today. Yeah. Calling the you a scammer. And I'm not usually the one to talk about defamation. It's like, but you can't just lie. You can't just make up lies. I think, let me read the exact tweet that she wrote. Right. Um, I screenshotted it and I posted it and it, she's taking it down now, but. I think the tweet said, all right, to understand, no, wrong one. She, she has a lot of nonsense tweets. Okay. A group exists to collect money for Karen Reed's defense fund. Makes sense. Litigation is expensive. But today I learned that a blogger, why doesn't she just say my name, by the way, uh, is scamming many. Or, or, or call you the award-winning journalist. Yeah. Or yeah she ever won, won an award? She that's her no award. no award that's her way of just kind of like putting me in my place being like you're just a blog it's like i i see what you're doing coffee but he's receiving 40 percent of the money raised in his effort to help kr's defense fund whether i am of the opinion that there is probable cause to believe that she was not responsible for his death or not she deserves to be able to defend herself anyone 
who was wondering why the blogger was involved needs to search no further. This case isn't about justice for John O'Keefe in his eyes. It's about green in his pockets. And so then she puts up a screenshot of somebody uh, selling magnets for that's a free Karen Reed. And it says 60% is going to the Karen Reed defense fund. 40 is going to turtle boy. It's like, so that's the opposite of a scam. This is what's called transparency. Like we're exactly. letting the people know and they're still choosing to pay for it. Now, the reason for almost every fundraiser that they have, obviously I don't make a dime on. This one in particular was just a little different because they were selling magnets with my logo on them. Right. And so like, you can't, I'm like, you can't, uh, it, whatever, for, like you can't, I mean, it's my logo. Right. So like anything like that, you can't just sell that and profit off. You know what I mean? It's like, that needs to be discussed. And so an, an agreement was reached. And if you don't want to buy them, then you can just donate directly to her fund. And then I don't get a dime and we're all fine with that. It's like, everyone's cool with it. And so the, the fact that she called it a scam and suggested that I'm like, everything that's being donated is actually going to me. It's like, no, it's just a small magnet sale. They sold like a hundred magnets. Like it's fine. It's not a big deal. It's like, ridiculous because yeah. there's a cost. The, the, I mean, it just and, and <clears throat> like you said, it's transparent. It, it's yeah, it's yeah. not a scam if you tell people what it is. It's 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 and that's why she took it down. That's why she changed it four times and <laughs> then deleted it. I mean, like a dirty delete. She doesn't. But then it. never. But then never. It's like it's she knows why. Yeah. Exactly. You if, if you she, if you delete something like that and then just pretend it didn't happen. Why. Yeah. Like, uh, are, did you not notice that? You, all the interaction that you got on that post, you're not going to apologize or say I was wrong because she doesn't have it in her. She's so cocky and arrogant, this woman. And it, it really troubles me to wonder like, you know, how many cases, like when I see people like her and Dougal and I'm like, how many innocent people did you send away on a hunch on a hunch? Cause that's all this is like, you don't actually, yeah. You know, you, you have no issue. You, you're not even trying to look for truth here. She had another tweet today. And I think this one's still up. That's even more ridiculous. Let me read this one to you. It says to understand the investigative environment that day, Karen Reed ran over her then boyfriend after a fight and left him for dead in the snow. According to court documents, one needs to understand the blizzard conditions that existed. No one saw officer O'Keefe that night as he laid dying in the snow. It was dark past midnight and people weren't focused on the corner of the house in this storm as they exited the distance away. And then she puts three pictures of the, um, of the house, none of which are from that day. Okay. None of which are from like their other pictures of the house, not even on January 29th with like snow mounds and stuff outside. It's like this. So this is a lot. And she, and then she posts a picture of the snowfall in Canton and it says 19 inches. And it's like, yeah, it was 19 inches when the storm was over. When John Bodies was found, there was two inches. And you know this. And you're just lying to people. You're intentionally deceiving them because you know there was only two inches at that time. And you know also, like, she's basically calling Lucky a liar. Like, no, 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 no. He, it was dark. He didn't see it. He didn't see you know, he, he he didn't know, it. It was blizzard conditions. It's like, read his affidavit with the uh, P.I. The PI specifically asks him and he goes, I had great visibility. Oh, what in the PI is like, so was there a body there? No. Are you sure? Would you have seen a body there if it was there? Yes, because I scan from side to side. And so he could not be more emphatic. And meanwhile, this one's just putting words in his mouth. Like, no, no, no. Actually, this is what happened. It's like, no, he's a witness, and this is his testimony. I feel like has she ever lived in a cold weather environment like her lack of understanding the fact that she thinks that michael proctor doesn't own a car with four-wheel drive like good i i once owned a car that didn't have four-wheel drive never again never <laughs> again in new england like you can't have it like you're you're gonna be miserable so like this idea that proctor who lives in canton would travel to milton to rally up and with buchanan whatever that means they're gonna rally up so she, they're going to drive in the snow in his car that can't drive in the snow to a further destination instead of just driving his car down the street to where the murder was. Okay. I mean, this is so absurd that uh, it, it, that woman just bothers me. I'm glad she blocked me. And you've yeah. seen her. You, you've seen my post, right? She won't engage me. I go right behind your tweets with her. She won't engage me. Not one time she's engaged. She knows who you're, I am. 
She yeah. will not engage one. You're a conspiracy theorist. She just lumps us all together. I mean, she's yeah. dis, well, it's just dishonest. It's so dishonest. Well, I Sean, tell you, yeah, I, I got to tell you one thing. A lot of Sean's fans are, uh, they want more Sean. They, they feel like you didn't get enough on the state police. So I want to make sure that uh, Turtle Boy's got a lot of fans here too. So everyone's got to make sure that we uh, get some Sean on there too. So what do you, what do you no, have about the state police? They want to hear just, more about this, I guess. And, and, and Aiden knows this. At one point in the morning, the theory of the Canton part of the case was it was a domestic assault, okay? But then what happened was Jen McCabe started changing her story. She called back one of the detectives and said, listen, I, I kind of forgot to tell you because she's with Brian now. She's with Coco. She's in, the, she's in Albert's house. And she, they're trying to say, well, this can't be a domestic assault. Karen could never have be, beaten up John enough to kill him. So... The story then changes. Well, she mentioned that her taillight may have been cracked, right? Well, okay, so she calls back Lang. Lang takes a statement. Now it goes from a domestic assault to a hidden run, okay? Where's the car at this time? It's right at One Meadows. I've said this a thousand times. Why did it take them 12 hours to get that car? They needed time. They, this is all about a, a game of time. If you look at the initial reports, he's got Jen McCabe at 1130. Now he's going to the hospital, but he's back in back with Matt McCabe at, at 1220. It's it's physically impossible for him to do that. It's all it's all about confusion. They needed time to develop a good story and allow that car to get out of the way so it can come back all the way back to Ken. If it was handed off, like Aiden said the other night, why didn't it go to Middleborough? Well, they have a beautiful facility there. They could have done all the forensics there. They had to come back to Canada. You know, you know, you know when they had their story. Uh, they had their story after the friends and family meeting in the McCabe's house. Right. That that yes. was when they they're like, "This is what we're going with. We're going to do this." Because by two thirty, he was already calling Dighton police and getting that car towed. His mind right. was made up by two thirty. So th that happened shortly after the friends and family meeting at the McCabe's, which he now says they interviewed them separately. That's a new addition that they threw in there, but. Uh, you know, I, I also wonder, I wonder what the cert team captain, I think his name is O'Hara. What was he thinking that day when the snow was accumulating and piling up? And he's like, we need to search this scene, right? But Proctor needs to give us the go ahead to do so. Every hour that we wait, more snow piles up. When are we going to search this? Why did they wait until five? 45 to search that why like the state police took over at eight o'clock they could have searched it by nine what are they waiting until 5 45 for and i'm protected nobody was there the right. whole day that anybody come come by that place to help the cause anybody but they left that crime scene completely unprotected and that's going to be a huge issue i mean vinnie politan needs to have someone come in and talk about that because that's you a notice, huge issue. You can't. Vinny Politan is on our side. I think that's pretty obvious he from is. his tone. He's yeah. like it's, is. Like definitely he is, is more. He has read more about this. He fires back now at people who aren't like he knows the case very well. I think he. I think he likes me. I think me and him hit it off. Uh, you know, besides the fact that I said the word moron on a show, which I guess is a big no no. Uh, so I'll try not to do that again. But it's and that's important because Vinny's on every night. He's probably the most influential. He's like the face of the TV show, you know, court TV. So to have him on matters much more than to have some random panelists who didn't know it. I mean, the, the three schlubs that he had on the other night, those what guys. What do they know? Yeah, what do yeah, they like know? That, big, that fat white guy oh. uh, from Utah. What's his name? Mike King. Oh, oh the genius. The, he's like the jolly grandfather. Like that's the role he plays. The Midwestern grandfather who I'm, I'm a retired law enforcement. I eat Werther's originals now. And I, I believe law enforcement all the time. I mean, that's like what he said. And then they have that moronic, uh, medical examiner woman or whoever she is. And right. she said that like, no, those are not, those look like they came from under the car. She says of those like, dude, my kids know. My kids know there's a dog scratch and Vinny fired back at her. He's like, I, they, what about scratches? He goes, she goes, those don't look like bites. What about scratches? We, we all agree that there, there, there aren't many bite marks on there. There's good scratch marks on there. So like I can, like the, the dog, the dog jumps up on you, does that. You're going to get a big, you're going to bleed. 
and they were under the impression that he had a snow coat on. They didn't realize he just had a, a lightweight uh, hoodie on. They thought, oh, it might have had some heavy coat. It was snowing. They didn't know that. They didn't know anything about the case. Zero. Yeah, you know, I'm just getting a little sick of the the fence sitters. Uh, the the note, my objection, woman on TikTok. Uh, you know, Kevin with the yellow cottage tails. It's just like, dude, come oh, on. Like, I'm glad you brought that up because that that's in the comments. Yellow cottage tails. I want to hear about him. You, it, you know, I don't want to waste too much time on him, but like, they're just these fence. Like, it there's no they they want to play the both sides of this, but what the two sides are not equal. It's like we can't pretend that these are equal sides. One side has undeniable facts and has had their story straight from the beginning. The other one is changing court documents in real time in, in front of our eyes about and and people are getting grand juried by the feds. They're being investigated. There's no two equal sides here. It's just no. silly. And they and and I heard the 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 woman on um the TikTok lady there know my objection. And a lot of people like her. I'm not a fan. Cause I don't like, I don't like people that don't take a pick a side, you know, have an actual opinion on something. She said that, Oh, well they, they're going to, they, this is not good that there's microscopic taillight on his shirt. I'm like, no, it's actually pretty consistent with what they've been doing the whole time. Just planting shit. Like they have no credibility. Why were they, why are his clothes? Where were they for 18 months? Where were his, you didn't search his clothes for 18 months. You just, found it all of a sudden and you ex nobody believes a word you people say nobody you have no credibility if you are giving the government any credibility in this story at this point you're just not paying attention you have no credibility because you're literally parroting something that is a it's a caricature at this point that morrissey conference was a joke a joke how can you take them seriously after that unbelievable he lied twice in it at least uh, that i found immediately and uh just to threaten people i mean that is just insane someone commented kevin just burned down the cottage i mean to me I, I don't think he's a bad guy i just think that he i don't think he's a bad guy either yeah you don't okay no no Not um, I, I, I he seems like a nice guy but at the same time it's like dude you know, stop it, Kevin. Like, you know, yeah. you're, you're not people stupid. a mob is just ridiculous. Yeah, that was he needs to apologize to the fans, in my opinion, the viewers. Uh, I would certainly do that because that's not cool because it insults people's intelligence. And you're like, well, you're calling me mindless and stupid. But m more than anything, I think in his heart, of, if you ask Kevin or any of these people gun to your head, Kevin, gun to your head, like life or death situation, you have to get this right or else you're dead. Did Karen Reed kill her? Kill him. What would he say? He would say no. They would all say no. Because it, like, if they actually had something on this of value, they would all say no. They know in their heart of hearts. And, and that's what I mean. They're just dishonest. They know she didn't do this. And they're just continuing to parade this like, oh, maybe she did. Maybe she didn't. I don't really know. We'll have to see what's presented at trial. You know what's going to be presented at trial. <laughs> you know it's going to. We've seen it all. There, there's evidence and discovery. It's all out there in motion. The, it, the trial should not be happening. Like That's what you should be saying. That This is a farce. This is a waste of taxpayer money and resources. It's morally wrong to do this to Karen Reed to and her her elderly parents to drag them through this. They don't want to be doing this, going to Dedham Court every three. That's got to be so nerve wracking. And it's like, no, end it, end it now. This the fact that there's even a federal investigation should be grounds to end this now. <laughs> I mean, dismiss it. What? What's the one where you can bring the charges back? Is that with or without prejudice? You can't bring the charges back with prejudice. It's not. okay. So, you, so dismiss so, with prejudice. So they can dismiss with it prejudice. without. Pre, so they can dismiss no, with it without. Prejudice. With no, with prejudice means it can't come back. Never come back with okay. prejudice. That's so the, the government. So, so the government hypothetically hey, could that could just dismiss this without prejudice, which would a, still yeah. let, let them bring it back if they wanted to, but would stop wasting her time for now. Like that's what they should do. Dismiss this without prejudice because there is a federal investigation going on and let's see what they come up with. And that's it. Like that's what they should do, but they're just so obsessed with this. I, I, I think it's more than Karen Reed. I think it's just them. Brian Albert has to have something on Michael Morrissey. Nothing else makes sense to me. Why, why is this man going so hard to defend 
Brian Albert. Can anybody explain that to me? That's the part I don't get. No, I, I think he, there's something going on there. It's it's he's got. I think that he's got something. It just that it's the only thing that makes sense. Maybe Brian has someone on someone above Michael Morrissey who has something on Michael Morrissey. Someone's someone pulling the strings here. Somebody it is. wouldn't. I mean, wouldn't surprise me that guy. I mean, I look at Michael Morrissey, and I don't want to generalize. I have no proof to back this up. He looks like a blow and hookers kind of guy. Like he looks like a guy that has been in some shady it's situations. Like he drinks a few there. beers too. Like right. I, I guarantee yeah. you, he hangs out at bars. Like I, I just, guarantee yeah. you, that guy has done some shady shit that people that's well known or, or uh, in certain circles, and and Brian Albert's in those circles, and I guarantee you there's something there Absolutely. that this that this guy. I have no way to prove that or back it up. It's just a theory because nothing else makes sense. Now. There's going to be a lot more coming up. There's a big hearing coming up on the 15th. W what do you got coming up, Turtle Boy, uh, in this week? Would any Anything you're looking at? Anything you're expecting? Same question as Sean, too. Yeah, well, I I, I anticipate more motions being filed. I, I, I anticipate a response from Karen Reed's team to the alterations in the, in the report about the time. They have to respond to that in writing before... Uh, the hearing. And so that's going to be explosive. What's Auntie Bev going to say mm. to that? Like, if you're the judge and you're sitting there, you're supposed to be the mediator here. And it's like, if if she doesn't call them out on that, about the times changing, 4.30 now, 3.30, then we know where she, like, we know where she stands, you know, because any neutral party in this would be like, well, hold on, hold on. We need to, fi we need to figure this out right now. Why did it say 4.30 before and 3.30 now? Which was it? Which was it? If, and why did you insist in this same courtroom that it was 430 for so long? Why did you do that? And that needs to be established. So I think we're going to see some fireworks there. They still have not responded to Morrissey's press conference. I'm anticipating something has got to be said about that or a motion. I don't know, something. And that could be wild what, what they could do with that. Um, th there's grounds to disbar him over that. There, there's certainly. So a lot could happen. What do you think, Sean? I, I I agree with him wholeheartedly. This this whole notion you can't change reports. It's nineteen months. You can't all of a sudden create another narrative. You've had nineteen months. You had four months, be, uh, three months before you went to the first grand jury to, to to indict her. If you didn't get it straight by then, it's too late now. There's going to be a problem with that. There will be a definite problem. And as far as the he, he, the lead investigator never showed up to the crime scene. God, this, is, this is ridiculous, right? <laughs> ridiculous. So they're not corrupt. They're just incompetent. Like that's the government's yeah. argue, argument there. But We're not corrupt. We're, We're we just don't respond. Yeah, our, our lead detectives just don't go to murder scenes. It's like we so, just don't know what just, we're doing. We just forgot right? how to do the job. Oh. I think they're looking to have the judge toss this case out. I mean, this this is crazy stuff. This some yeah. violations being made every time. Yeah, I'm sure they I will eventually file a motion. There won't be a motion to dismiss for on the 15th, but eventually they're going to have to file one. But, you know, Auntie Bev is the one that gets to decide that. We've seen her track record. I, I, I wouldn't count on that. I wouldn't count on that. But I, I honestly, I'm so fired up about a couple things here. I'm fired up about not only the grand jury, the federal grand jury stuff, but also this appeal in the Supreme Judicial Court for unknown rulings about canoni and the only thing that i can think of that everyone agrees is the brian albert phone like that, that that's been denied a couple times now and uh that would really crack the case open for the defense if they could get brian albert's phone and so if you were them why wouldn't you appeal that to the supreme judicial court get another set of eyes on it and that would change everything exactly. if that happens so i'm you excited to see where that goes yeah, we got a question coming in uh, about uh, Brian Albert being retired. I know Turtle. Uh, Aiden I don't said, know. If, you don't know I anything don't know about it. I don't know. You're anything. asking Sean about it now. Do you know anything yeah. about that, Sean? Yeah. So I had a, I have a I have a source close in HR in Boston said that his retirement was approved during the summer, effective September first, which is a Friday. You either do it at the beginning of the month or the end of the month. He chose the beginning of the month. So we'll see. I know he bought a new car. I'm. Gonna, I'll get that information. On Monday, he doesn't have a work car now. He has to have another car. He bought a new car. We know he bought a new car. Really? I'll get that out. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
he bought a new car. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, this this know, is kind of, this came in a different at a different angle to me, but I I got to protect this source completely because this is this is too close to the to the main throne here. Yeah, and they all they did have somebody oh, in, somebody in the comments asking about um dash cams. It's like yeah, the police the can police do have dash cams, and we have not seen those yet. But they will I, whatever's on them will be used at trial, and I believe that the nine one one call when it comes out will be extremely beneficial to Karen Reed. Uh, because keep in mind, Jen McCabe is the one who makes that call. And you can tell a lot from a 911 call. You know, you can see for anyone who's like, it's all about how Karen Reed sounds on that 911 call. Does she sound authentic when she's screaming? You know, is, you know, like, does it sound, does she sound surprised? That's going to be a big thing. Because if she sounds surprised, then she had no idea he was dead and she didn't kill him. And like, how does Jen McCabe sound? Does she sound cold and calculated? Uh, so there's going to be a lot when that eventually comes out too. Right. Oh. And the fact that the 911 hasn't been released, that's a, a huge bell. They give that up all the time. Now, all nowadays, the, the 911 call is sent out within days. You get to hear it. What, what's wrong with that call? They know why. They know, they know why. why. They know why. <laughs> why they're not showing a bunch. Again, I, I, I don't think they have any intention of, of getting Karen Reed. I don't think that's their goal here at all. Their goal is just to try this uh to have an excuse not to go after the alberts and the mccabes but I i'm so fired up about the federal stuff after hearing these kids i call them kids like these young adults have all been subpoenaed they're not messing around anymore like they're at the end here if they're bringing those kids in those people in think about it if they're bringing in caitlin albert exactly. right exactly who who the story with caitlin albert the whole time was she wasn't there so if they're bringing her in that means they know she was there. And how would they know she was there? They can't like Pro Proctor never applied for the geofence, but the feds can get that very easily. I Absolutely. guarantee the feds did the geofence and they know each and every person in that house. Now, Caitlin Albert, I assume her attorney is going to be the same one as her dad, right? Greg Henning. I'm assuming they're going to use the same attorney. And um, if Greg Henning is smart, which I'm sure he is, he's not stupid. I'm sure he's going to tell them like they, you cannot lie to the feds. They know everything. Like they know where your cell phone is. So you need to tell them the truth about what time you left. You got to tell them, you got to tell them everything. So I think that a lot of, I keep, cause it's behind closed doors. So you don't know what happened, but the fact that they're even being subpoenaed at all means that the feds have something on her and they're confronting her with it. And it's, she can't lie anymore because they've got evidence of it all, which makes me believe that this whole thing is unraveling. And it, when the feds in like when a grand jury happens when it's over and they have all the witnesses it's instantaneous they usually indict or don't indict within a day so it this it's not one of those things they sit on forever um so and there's going to, i don't but I, the question is who's going to be the target and personally what it sounds like to me is the main target is michael proctor because he's the only one that seems out of the loop there think about mm. it michael proctor interviewed lucky Lawfren two days after I did, right? Why did he do that? Well, what did I say in my reporting? That Lucky Loughran spoke with the FBI. So that's the first time Michael Proctor saw it in writing that, oh shit, this guy who could screw me is talking to the feds. So I think that he interviewed Lucky because he wants to know what Lucky knows. And he wants to know, what did the feds ask you? Are they asking about me? And that makes me think that Michael Proctor has never spoken to the feds because he is the target of the feds. That's what I, I have no way to back that up, but that just seems like the most logical thing here that Michael Proc, because they're go they're not going for simple murder. They're going for corruption and cover up. And that would be right. Michael, Michael Proctor quarterbacked this. None of this is possible without him. And I think they're going to go after him. And it makes me happy to know that Karen Reed is probably not shitting her pants anymore. She probably was no. a year ago, but she's probably sitting back and enjoying this now. And it's got to be satisfying to know that all these people have to go down to Moakley courthouse. And now they got to testify in front of a grand jury and of attorneys. She's winning. They're on the defensive and it, it, they're more worried about going to jail than she ever will be. And don't be surprised. There's multiple targets. They have to be multiple targets. They have to be, this could That's be all right. about exculpatory evidence too. Are you, I was just before you came out, you said something that caught my ear last night. 
if that district attorney's office is withholding um, exculpatory evidence, that's a huge problem. That's a huge problem in this case. They could be targets in that office. You got to give it up. You have to give. Yeah, yeah I guess they'd have to you prove have to that. Give that information. You know? I, they'll just play dumb. They'll just say, oh, you know, like the lally, the lally explaining, I call it about, oh, well, we're, we're going to test it. And then there was a delay and then there was an email and we didn't hear back sure. from them. And then blah, 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 blah. He'll try to lally explain his way out of it, I guess. Um, it, it, I, I think it'll be hard to prove that they, you know, it, like what, what specific piece of exculpatory evidence did they not give to the defense? Can you think of anything? I could think of a lot. What's the first you thing that comes to that- mind? That they they purposely they were purposely told not to search that house. They were. Is that from your that's sauces? That's a theory no, or no, sauce? Not, no, that's a theory. Theory. Okay. They okay. were purposely told to back up. What if that if was they, caught on? Yeah. What if that was it, caught on a wiretap? You think is this? That's I was thinking prove, that too. There's got to be wiretaps. That's up. how you prove. That's how you prove that that office is involved because they have to go back to him. He has to say, I don't believe Lally believes a word he's talking about. I believe Lally has a gun to his head. Nobody can look at those affidavits. Nobody can look at this case like Lally is and believe he doesn't have the passion. He has he's he's like a wet rag. He doesn't have the passion that he should have for this case. He's not, he's not, he's not defending this. He's not presenting this case with passion. Does he have he passion? I've never, I've never seen him in action before. Like, no, I can't imagine not, that man having passion. <laughs> like, he's he's dull. Happens. He's dull. I mean, most most uh, most prosecutors get up with vigor. It's it, listen. It's an act. It's a game. It but you do the best you can, and he's not doing it because I don't believe he believes his own case. It's impossible for him to believe that. And let's face it. We said nineteen. Uh, who, who said that? Coffin Daver. Nineteen inches of snow. And that the and the evidence levitated through the snow. Are we we're going to believe this? No, they'll have a new explanation for that. I'm sure so they'll say, "Oh no, they shoveled." The, this is what they do. They just add on after they see the weaknesses of their case. They just add shit on. That's what they've done in their most recent thing. They saw all right. the weaknesses of the first one, and then they just add shit on. I found another uh, thing that they got rid of uh, earlier today. Uh, let me bring it up. It was from a di- another thing I noticed that they deleted uh, from the charging documents that they had earlier. Let me see if I have this. Okay, so in the charging documents, it's, let me. the second paragraph of the charging documents says, on January 29th, 2022, at approximately 6.04, can I bring this actually up? Can I, can I put, I'll, I'll, I'll show the screen this. Possibly. I, are you able to, uh, I don't know. I, yeah, I let have me no see. idea actually. You can try it. Yeah, um, can you, it should be in the bottom. Oh, I got can it, you, add the screen. Yeah, look at that. So see that sentence right there? Uh, Fairview Road being a publicly maintained roadway with the town of Canton, right? Uh, Guess what's now missing from the new report? I'll show you. Now, like, so remember that one that you just saw right there. And now let's look at the new one. Let's look at the new one. On January 29th at approximately 6.04, the Canton Park, 911 call from a woman reporting a male party subsequently identified as victim, John O'Keefe, found outside in the snow at 34 Fairview Road. The, the next sentence should be, Fairview Road being a publicly maintained roadway within the town of Canton. Does it say that? No. And then the next sentence is, Canton at the police. time of the 911 call. They got rid of the sentence that says Fairview Road being a publicly maintained roadway within the town of Canton. Now ask yourself why, because if it's a publicly maintained roadway, then that, and if they knew that when they charged her, that means they knew that the Canton DPW is in charge of maintaining that road. So that it's little shit like that, that they are deleting because they're like, Oh shit. If we knew then, if we knew then that it was a publicly maintained road, then we should have interviewed the DPW guy. We should have interviewed Lucky Lawfren. There's no excuse for it. Right. So they're they're doing little shit like that to cover their own asses now. They're on the defensive. 
So they thought we wouldn't notice. They, th they, they thought we wouldn't notice, but it's like, no. what are you thinking? You know, that this case has more eyes on it than any case in that courthouse ever. Like with social media and everything, like you cannot hide way too many people are invested in the story. Way too many people, smart people too. You know, people like Sean with a background in law enforcement, you know, attorneys are watching this. You know, a lot of attorneys reach out to me about this and they're just like, I can't believe they're pushing forward with this. And let me, let me, both. Have, you, have you ever seen anything change like that? Like, a, a like I've never seen it. Have you seen something like that where it's changed? My personal, you know, when you get to this stage, she's about to go on trial. This should be ironclad. There should be no change. Now, during the investigating process or, or the actual lead up to the case, if you put in a statement, A, you can do a supplemental report to say, okay, by the way, we're adding this part because we didn't get it right. They literally changed the whole charging document. You can't do that. And another person in your show last night they made a great point. What did they tell the grand jury that brought this case against, against Karen? What yeah. information did they give them? Because clearly that information is different now from the information we have right now. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. This could be, this is what I'm saying, Aiden. I think they're looking to have this thing torpedoed. That, they don't oh, I'm want sure. to go to trial. They don't right. want to go to trial. They want to That's make it look saying. like they I mean, tried. And, yeah, I, I They want to get spanked. They want it, they want it tossed. I mean, just pure misconduct. Like, picture 12 jurors hearing you. Like, there's no way you can get 12. No way. Like, you, you, anytime they show this on the news, anything, and then you see in the comments, everyone new people seeing this are just like yeah no like no one is going right. to be able to be like yeah put her away for life i'm that convinced of her guilt because that's what you have to be to say guilty in a murder trial you know is put her away even in even in cases where they got a shitload of evidence on the defendant there's always some doubt that going into the trial you you don't know what's gonna like casey anthony Casey Anthony was found not guilty. They had a shit ton more evidence on her than they ever did on Karen Reed. And so it's like, I'm not even remotely worried about that. And it, the fact that they haven't dropped it is just so telling. It's so telling. I agree with you 100%, but it's still scary. That, it is. There's even like a 0.001 chance that she could be convicted. Like, But I, I agree. I, I don't see it happening. I, don't, I So many ways. I want to, um, yeah, I, I have to, uh, run soon. Cause I got a bunch of dogs I got to take out tonight. That's cool. But I, I got to get, I got to do some yeah. shit anyway. So, yeah. but I want to give you guys like final statements. What do you want to share? Anything we haven't discussed tonight? Anything we want to make people aware of? <laughs> Let's go first with Sean. Okay. Basically I'm in this to basically bring justice to John. John's the primary right here. He needs some, some dignity brought back. To his name, he was left out there like trash. He's a Boston police officer. He never received it. And of course, anything can be done to exonerate, not 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 guilty, exonerate with prejudice, so it can never come back to haunt her down the road. It's got to be it's got to be a complete wash, and whatever can be done to corral the animals, and they're still on the run. They're out there, and Chief Rafferty, you know that. Your guys know it. Just do the right thing. Come forward. Do the job. That's it. It's easy. Beyond uh, laughing at the great jokes that the award-winning journalist leaves, I'm also often laughing at the comments. <laughs> this is a good one. Lally will look for a jury that includes Carl Dugo, Brian Riccio, Krusty Panning, <laughs> Wendy Murphy, and Ruba. I that's just, a, that's their own. Just, that's their own. That's their only hope. Really sadly. <laughs> that is their only hope. Uh, but you know, it's like when we say we want justice for John, usually when you say you want justice for somebody who's been killed, right? Who do you want justice for? Well, you know, obviously for him, but he's dead. So he gets like, ju like justice is supposed to bring closure to the, you know, the closest people to the deceased. Right. And in this case, that would be obviously his mother and, um, his brother. Probably. And I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I don't care if they get justice, like they don't. Does, like the way they've conducted themselves during this, it's like, I don't like in the, towards Karen and like, I, I have, I, I, I don't like, do they deserve it? Like the way that like, they could have 
put like if they had been more vocal from the beginning and say, now we want answers, we want this and that it would put pressure on them to do the right thing. Right. But they didn't, they went along with this charade, but I'll tell you who does deserve justice is his, is his niece and nephew. They deserve justice. Oh. Right. And Karen. And so like that's who I, that we want justice for, right. The innocent kids who already lost both of their parents and then lost their new father, bash slash uncle, and this woman that came into their life for a couple of years and acted as a good female role model and was taken from them as well. And, 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 and they had their brains washed about who she actually was. And so I want justice for those two more than anything. Definitely. We, we need justice for John and those kids. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is a great show. I want to thank you both for coming on. Uh, Amazing, thank you, Sean. Mike. Yeah, amazing. Thank you for, yeah, thanks for having me. I was just watching it. I didn't mean to come up, but I'm like, this is too good. I can't, I can't help myself. I, I've been I've been telling people to get you back on our show. Like I've been lobbying your fans, so it's good to have you back tonight. Um, everyone liked it. They're saying great show, TB and Sean, great show. Um, do do you know? Just make sure whoever's listening, smash that subscribe button to rip off oh, Aiden yeah. again. I rip them off all the time. No, every, I, I steal that Imitation. too. Everyone says smash. Yeah, everyone says yeah. smash. Oh, yeah, but I'm saying it because you say it. That's where I hear it. I don't, you know. <laughs> well, I hear it from the kids these days. So <laughs> I can't take credit for that one. Sure. So thank you so much, everybody, for listening. And uh, thank you to our guest. And we're the Young Jerks. We'll see you next time. I'm not sure when, but it'll be soon. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Aiden. And thank you, Sean. We'll Thanks see you